Hello and welcome to the Nash Tackle Off The Hook podcast. Just to make you aware, this podcast may contain some explicit slash offensive language. And if that's not your thing, you don't have to listen. But I have given you a warning. I hope you enjoy the rest of the show. You don't know the half of it, but yeah, um, I'm anyway. Time, yeah, I'm, good, on, mate. I'm skating on the thinnest <laughs> ice known to man. Like. He said, and um, they put a poison in the tank that just instantly kills them. He went, and we've run out of it, so we cut their heads off with shovels. Suddenly, bang! The whole boat exploded. Take your sort of eight-inch-long piranha and imagine that at four, five, maybe six feet. I said, I've revived your dead fish. <laughs> F off, he said. You haven't. That was just humongous. It was... I couldn't believe what I was looking at. I'm just battling this fish out and on. I know it's a black man. I'm, yeah. I'm saying I'll never be a naughty boy again. If you catch fish and you return them to the water, then you are my brother. Jake the Heron Hughes, welcome to the Nash Podcast, mate. How are you? Yeah, good. Very good. You've brought a guest as well, I mate. have, yeah. He's, he's, um, he's stuck with me for the weekend. I'm going fishing after this. And uh, my missus has, has gone to Cornwall, so... It's a bit of a golden ticket. If I can take the dog with me, it saves her take. And she's free then. She can go wherever she wants with a little one. So, I thought, yeah, I'll take the dog with me. He's and, uh, happy as Larry, do, do her a favour, come here and then go fishing for three nights. <laughs> and you're both sporting the same haircut. This yeah. is quality. Yeah, well, he, this was inspired by him. You know? I, like I saw it, it and I thought, I've got to do it. It's normally a lot longer, but summertime, isn't it? I love it, mate. Um, the Heron, mate. Yeah. That is on Insta. Jake the Heron. Don't even have the surname in there, mate. Where um, is the Heron from? How did that come to be? That was, uh, I was fishing over Frogmore. Um, I've been there for a few years at that point. And me and, my, uh, me and a friend, Brad, we we started fishing there for, for bream and tension stuff and started fishing for the carp. And I remember the first year on there fishing for the carp, we surprised ourselves, you know, because I think I'd caught one double. I'd foul hooked a 15 pounder. And I'd caught a 17 pounder. Those were the three carp I caught before, like decent ones before Frogmore. Um, apart from saying that, apart from some sort of Stambra fish, day ticket fish. But put it this way, my, my PB for a while was a, a foul hooked fish because I was that young and inexperienced. And I didn't know it. any better. But we we, we got, on to, um, got on to Frogmore and something happened. I remember we, my mate had done a paper round, um, got these, um, these ready tied rigs with... Uh, lead core leaders and I was just like mate this is sick. like this is sick you know I knew I was going to get into carp fish straight away that was it I've got rid of everything just started carp fishing uh, there used to be a, a telly shopping channel called oh, I can't remember what it was now I, I got the carp gear from there it was rubbish anyway a few years into Frogmore uh, Ian Bailey started fishing uh, the leather pit which is obviously the one with the toadless leather in it yeah or was and um, the style of angling that, that me and a mate of mine had, had adopt, Brad his name is we'd adopted was very much sort of you know, wading the margins, dropping rigs, surface fishing, that kind of thing. And he, uh, one day he said, to, he goes, he goes, well, hello, mate. He said, you look like a little heron over there, like, mate. And it just stuck. And since then, you know, everyone sort of called me the heron after that. So I um, love that, mate. Yeah. You're a yeah. very um, multi-talented bloke, mate. We're obviously going to talk fishing, but some incredible illustrations, mate. And which a lot of people may or may not know, sort of now pretty extensively involved in terms of videography in the trade as well mate yeah yeah so um well i mean 10 11 what was, what was it probably 12 years ago now um i come here it's changed a bit since but uh, i come here ditch had sort of lined up some stuff with the the book illustration for kev yeah uh, for kev yeah so i did uh, memoirs of a carp fisher um never illustrated anything before but i'd done a few drawings i've done one for james turner um, just a carp drawing one's for James Armstrong they just messaged me on Facebook but uh, Turner was local to me so yeah. I'd never met him but that's sort of how I met him and then I did one on behalf of James for Bailey so he, he did it like a birthday present um, and yeah I put them on Facebook and uh, I remember I was I was fishing over um, Stanborough at the time on there was a boating lake next door you weren't allowed to fish it. Do you know Stanbra? No. Little day ticket, but yeah, it's a it, little sort of local day Where ticket. Where in the world's that? Near you? Yeah, well in. So oh, not okay, too far yeah, from yeah. me, about 20 minutes. And um, yeah, I was over that way and I had just like a rod, a bit of bread and, and, a, and a net. Uh, I was on the boat and like, you're not allowed to fish it. And I remember I, it was getting dark. Uh, I just had a 27 pound, the first one out of there. Was, I couldn't believe it. There's a lot of little ones in there. 
And um, at the time, like, I didn't drive. So I sometimes I'd, and I didn't have a lot of money as well. So I think I was 16, 17 at the time. Uh, so I would just fish where I could, where I could afford to, you know, and, and I didn't actually have the Verulam ticket at that point for uh, Frogmore for the Leather Pit. So I was just bouncing around. And yeah, Ditch rang me while I was there. Just had this fish. I'd, I'd had a rod out. And I thought, why is he ringing me? You know, I knew him from there. Obviously, Ditch worked here for a long time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was like, oh, mate, we've had a, a bit of trouble with the Illustrator. We've got two weeks. Do you want to do it? And I had my exams at the time. So I had my art exam coming up. And I thought, do I want to do the art exam? Or do I want to do this? And I, school wasn't ready for me anyway. So well, what? you sacked off your art exam to do Kev's book illustrations. Pretty, I mean, I'd done the exam, but I, the coursework for it, I started the night before the exam. <laughs> I literally got the book out and was like, that, you know, but I, I weren't too bothered anyway, to be honest. Like, I Where's that talent? You're just naturally in you, that sort of artistic. Yeah, it's like the fishing. I've always had a desire to draw stuff like to the, to the point where my fishing trousers is covered in drawings. Like where I've, I'm just oh. bored. I've got a biro and I'll show you after this or my, my brolly covered, you know, like I'm a doodler really. And, and that's all I ever was. I was a doodler and, um, the school sort of recognized it and was like, Oh, he's talented. We'll get him to do his GCSEs in his art GCSE in year nine. So a couple of years early. So I've done oh. that. That's why I weren't too bothered. Cause it's like, I've already got a GCSE. I don't need another one, but I did it again. I, I, it was really weird. And, um, yeah, so done that. Um, d- uh, done the book illustrations. I boshed them out in two weeks. Come over here. Um, I really wanted to work in in angling as well because I loved it. You know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And um, come here. Saw Kev. He was like, "You not done the front cover?" Well, I didn't know I had to. He was like, "Well, I need the front cover doing." So they proper sorted me out. You know, I had loads of bait and gear and money and whatnot. It was it was wicked. I loved it. He even said, "Oh, you know, you can fish the church." But I was sort of falling out of angling at that point. Uh, approaching, well, seven, you know, going out and having a few beers, going to yeah, parties, yeah, that yeah, kind of, of thing. Um, but yeah, um, what happened after that? Yeah, I've done the front cover and then I got a job offer uh, for something in the angling world. I won't get into that, but um, yeah, and, and my mum wanted me to to do my A-levels. So I just sort of sacked it off really. It was strange when I think back to it, you know, but I wouldn't do it any different, but no. it just took 12 years. I'm 29 now. 12 years to sort of get back into it or 11 years, you know, last year. Um, and yeah, it's now that I've, I've decided, right, let's, let's get into it and do what I want. You know, I've just spent 12 years cutting air. All them exams didn't do anything for me. And I sort of knew they wouldn't anyway. Like, but yeah, here we are now, you know, getting right into the, to the, um, well, the videography stuff. So, mate, you're obviously clearly quite sort of, I don't know, practical, but talented in terms of that, that, and, uh, and people have referenced it before, Ollie's talked about it, that sort of eye, but also the actual creativity, because you've got drawing and illustrating, which seems, I mean, you say doodling, but mate, if I doodled on my brolly, trust me, you wouldn't be able to identify it as a carp or whatever it's trying to be, mate, I'm dreadful. So there's obviously an inherent talent there, and then that sort of same creative process you've now transferred into sort of videography. Um, and you're doing work at the moment. We're sticky, ain't you? Yep. Yeah. So, um, Fair play. Do you want me to tell you how that sort of come about? Or uh, yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, I had the twelve years of not doing any art, and I had a, probably the lockdown was hard work. You know, because they said you can't work, can't do this, can't do that. I was thinking of ways I could sort of make money, and me and my mate were were, were sort of making bait and, and trying to flog it. And I think there was just a point where I was just like, start a twenty. Two, I think it was. I was just like, this ain't really, you know, what do I really want? This isn't doing it for me. It's smelly, you know, I put loads of money into it. It's not really getting where I want it to go and whatever. And sort of, I just thought, you know what? I'm going to start painting again. And uh, the first painting I think I spent, oh God, it was like 40 hours or something ridiculous, oil painting. And um, I ended up flogging a load of prints out of that. And it gave me a bit of, com- well, a lot of confidence actually. Uh, in my work because I'd never done a, um, a painting before. It was always sort of pencil drawings and stuff. And I was like, right, okay. And the other thing I, I'd, I'd lacked sort of the um, patience to do it, but all, suddenly out of nowhere, I've got it. I don't know if it was the lockdown or I've got a few ideas as to, as to why it is um, where I got that sort of patience from in, in more recent years, but you grow up and you mature as well, don't you? Yeah, of course. And, um, yeah, I, I thought, right, I've got the patience to do this. I'm going to give it a good go. I'm going to, and I'm going to use all these Instagram, yeah, you know, all these photos of these carp I've caught to go on the Instagram. I'm going to put a bit of the, the artwork on there. I'm going to put a bit of the video stuff because I may, ended up making a video out of it as well. Yeah, um, I've seen that. Yeah. So I thought, um, 
yeah, I'm going to uh, just sort of see see how it goes, see what opportunities arise. I wasn't looking for anything specific. It could have been anything. But, um, yeah, I, I was waiting. And, and I remember this time last year, the fishing was going really well. Um, we had another little one on the way, and I was really trying to sort of work out where I was going with it. But I remember ringing my mate, works for in a bit, does a bit of CCTV. I was like, mate, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know where I'm going. Um, you know, look, have you got any work? I can't cut air anymore. I can't do 13 hour days anymore. I was working in a shop then. I've been sort of... So, okay, so the interim period, you're cutting air. So you're cutting air, yeah. Okay. So, so, and the, the thing is, is that I'd sort of peaked within four years of, of barbering, um, where I was managing a shop, earning really good money, working a lot of hours. But as soon as I had the little one, it was, I didn't want to do it anymore. But I carried on and on and on and on. And, you know, by this point, the little one was four. Um, and another one was on the way as well. And I was like, right, this is time now. Because otherwise, mm. I've just got to graft until I'm dead, you know, like... I've really got to, got to work it out. And uh, I rang my mate and I was like, oh, you know, have you got any work? Blah, blah, blah. I, I went for a, a job at, e- at EasyJet in like recruitment. That ain't me. You know, I got the job. I, was, oh, I don't want to do it. And I had to be honest with myself, you know, and, and then it, it just a bit of faith, in, a confidence in myself, which has only been the last couple of years that I've realised sort of that I can do stuff, which I think we all can. We, we're all able in, in, in many ways. And uh, yeah, I, I just sort of went for it. An opportunity come up to do a bit of uh, social media stuff, done that for about seven or eight months and then got a phone call at the right time as well with, with, uh, from Dan Wildboar and he said, uh, do you fancy coming and doing some video stuff with us full time? Get a van and a nice camera and, and, and decent money. I said, like, yeah, well, go, go on then, why not? You know, like, it was like an yeah. offer I couldn't refuse. Like every, everything, I was like, what about this? Yeah, no, no, no worries. What about that? Yeah, that's fine. That's just to say Wildboar did any work, mate. <laughs> <laughs> mate, I'll do the work if it, if it means, you know. <laughs> nah, he's it, good, it they're was, good lads. It was good timing, you know, really good timing. So, yeah. Um, and and the, what I was doing before, I was enjoying, but this is, yeah. I'm is lo- this the, 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 the sort of, I, I know you referenced there having a couple of kids. They're all life-changing events. Life gets a little bit more, I don't know, serious. There's people that depend on you, income sources, all that sort of stuff comes into play. And you, I think there is an awareness that, you know what I mean, you've got to sort out whatever your path's going to be pretty quickly. Is this the path you think indefinitely for the rest of? I think that you can see. I think with me, there's no path. You know, like I, I, right. I think I, I I went down the path and it didn't work. You know, I thought right, do the hair, go get a shop after so many years, do this, do that. Same with my fishing, try and arrange it, and it doesn't work. I get bored. I'm like, if it's set up, it scares me. Okay. I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna just go with the flow, see what happens. And that way you, you don't get caught in any traps then. And this is something I've learned. I've always been like that. Have you? But there's been some things like work, for example, where I haven't. And because you're, we're born into this sort of system where you think that you have to do this, 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 and this. Yeah. Whereas the reality is you can do whatever the hell you want. And I wish I knew that. Well, I don't wish I knew that years ago, but I'm glad I know it now, put it that way. Because it's a mis- it can be a miserable path, you know, whereas this is like, I'm sort of going with the wind with it. And now my missus, she's, I mean, we've always got on so well, but she's known that I haven't enjoyed cutting air and stuff for a yeah. long time. Yeah, yeah. But it's been, it's, it's been two years really, or two and a half years of, of just going with the flow and trusting it, even when it, it looks like there's nothing to trust. And it's just, it's gone spot on, you know. There's loads of different things going on. The art stuff, all sorts. That so you're just, still doing the painting and, and all that yeah, stuff? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm still doing it. Yeah, I've got one the size of this door here that I'm doing at the minute. So Jeez. Northern Lights, and it's all a bit weird and psychedelic. So. But you do the fishing stuff as well. I mean, I've seen a few late yeah, maps. Yeah, so, I've yeah. seen some mega work. Like. So I'm doing, doing uh, Elstow map at the minute. Um, I've done I've done like maps and stuff that I can't show because they're for sort of non-publicity yeah, lakes and stuff like that. Of course. Um, but it gives you opportunities to fish places you never thought you would and money. And, you know, it's great, like. I'm glad that, and, and that's the thing I like is that you, all these little projects and I've got the time to do it as well because at the minute I'm sort of doing three days with them filming whatever on the bank and then a little little bits and bobs here and there, a bit of editing and stuff, but, but I basically get two days to sort of mess around and do, do what I want to do as well. So it's great, you know. Mate, hey, it sounds like you, yeah, you've done really well, but you've got that sort of, I don't know, that sort of personality and that, that sort of, it looks like you have a bit of faith in that everything will be sound and... As long as you're happy, you're happy, and the happiness is the important factor. If people want to, can people commission drawings? Can you get that done from you, or what? I don't know. Um, is that a thing? Yeah, yeah I mean, you know, or what not. I say is just ask. Just okay. ask, and, and I can only say yes or no. You know, a lot of people, they'll say, oh, can you do a map for me? I'd yeah. say, well, what's your budget? You know, like, because I can't, if it's not an infamous one, I, or I can't 
sell any off the back of it. I can't turn it into prints. Um, but if, if, and the other thing as well, if someone said to me, can you do this for this book? I yep. wouldn't be bothered about the money so much. But if someone said, oh, can you do my farm pond? Oh, my budget's 40 quid. It's a no, you know? So just ask the question, like, if it inspires me, I'll do it. Um, right, okay. And, you know, I'll reply and, and tell you whether I want to do it or Proper not. Proper arty, mate, isn't you? <laughs> <laughs> what a creative. You're like one of those, isn't you? Yeah. It's I've got a few always mates been, like Always that. been like that. Yeah, just a bit of a bit of an airhead, you know? I'm boring, mate. I love that. No, mate. no, I'm no, just no. like, we're all square different. box, square box, square box, dun, dun, dun. Like, we're I all different. Got, we're yeah. all different. I haven't got the old roller coaster in me, mate. Do you know what I mean? But I like that. Fishing wise. Now for me, in terms of seeing what you've put on Instagram, and that's pretty much bar talking about this podcast, my sort of reference point for you and your angling, I've always seen incredible carp, real special carp on Instagram, real good photography, but also what I would sort of stereotype as sort of proper carpy BC carp fishing, mate. The likes are sticky, that type of yeah, stuff, yeah, that, yeah. that, that level or that type of angling. And I know that's stereotypical, but that's what I see. That's what comes across to me when I look at your imagery and the fish that you've caught for you. If you were to try and summarize your sort of style of angling, what, what would you say? Does it fit in that category? Is it a category all of its own? What is it? Um, I mean, it's a hard one to, again, to put in a box, but um, I would say I fish the best or my best anyway. I'm not, I'm not great. I'm not a great angler. Uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm all right. I'm, I'm good enough, you know, but I think for me, it's, it's more about just putting the effort in, you know, um, trying to get down the lake before work or, or pre-baiting or, um, you know, putting all the odds in your favour, you know, with limited time, but, um, if, if you're able to go down the lake and bait up or walk it before work or after, you've got more time, really. Um, it's hard, I, Again, I just sort of go with the flow with it and, and each individual lake is different. You could fish a shallow water covered in pads, um, really silty, and, and you can fish it one way. And you go to another lake and you apply them same rules, but it doesn't work. I think you've got to go there or, or I go. I don't think you've got, you do what you want. And everything, the funny thing is with fishing is, is that, everyone has their way and it sort of works if they're confident in it. Mm -hmm. And, um, if I've approached, uh, if I've took an approach, maybe I've, I've not copied someone, but said, well, he's done really well doing this. I'm going to do, it hasn't really worked for me. And that's a lesson that I've learned. You know, you just got to go there and just work it out. Really. I mean, there's so many variables to get right. Um, that you, you again, you just can't apply one thing for one lake, but I love my edge fishing. That's I love stalking. I love, I love it all, really. I, like you know, at the minute, a lot of my fishing is is longer range, quite quite savage. Lots of islands, lots of crayfish, um, and and it's it's almost like an industrial approach, like big hooks, yeah, sixty pound lead, that kind of thing. Uh, and I love that sort of delicate, trim, you know, trimmed down sort of one out the bag, right in the edge, you know, that kind of thing. I love I love it all. I don't really know what my approach is to be honest, but. Um, What's your, what would you say your strongest, like if, if you were to play to your absolute strengths in terms of your carp fishing, what, what are the, what are the elements? Is it distant casting? Is it edge fishing? Is it, what is it? None of it. <laughs> Don't give um, me that. I've seen I, the fish on your Insta, I'd, mate. I'd say, I'd say is, it's working out what you've got to do. So like, I'm not the best at putting a, a, a rig on a dinner plate, but I'll make sure it gets on the dinner plate. If it takes me 200 casts, I'm not the best at range fishing, but I'll just carry, I'll just try, you know, like, if I've got to do it, I'll do it. And it's working out what you have to do. Because you, if I go to my lake now and go, well, I'm really good at edge fishing. I'm going to do that. You'll only fish little ponds forever or you'll blank on, on, you know, I know they get in the edge everywhere, but I think it's just getting there and going, right, I've got to do this and doing it because you could be the best at one thing. But if that doesn't, if, if them rules don't apply on that lake, it's not going to work, you know, but if I had to, yeah, edge fishing or finding them is really what, um, and and that's like subtle. It might be that in shallow water, the water's moving slightly differently to the rest to everywhere else, or there might be um, five or six slight flat spots which have worked really well for me on the bigger pits when there's a trickle, and that's fish just under the surface, like like you know maybe six seven inches under the surface. It might be shows, it might be relentlessly just looking, it might be water. I mean, watercraft massive. Yeah, um, of course it is. You know, working out where they're going to be is always better than finding them. Because if you're finding them, you've got to put a rig on them. Mm -hmm. That's hard work. 
you know. Then she's got a bushwhacker. Exactly. Yeah, bushwhacker, <laughs> um, mate. So, um, yeah. Whereas, if you know, if you can work out where they're gonna be, you're one step ahead of them. I mm. think that is the that's the biggest edge for me. Is that being one step ahead, getting there, getting where you know they're gonna be tomorrow, you know. And that, I get you. I get you. I completely see it. Watercraft being on them, being ahead of the game, that whole aspect. What well, conversely, we talked about strengths. What would you say? is for you the sort of maybe the weaker element or the bit where you feel really out of your comfort zone if you have to do it? Um, probably zigging and floater fishing. Yeah? You know? Um, I don't like I don't like the idea of thin line and a little hook. If I see it fishing the edge, I'm putting 15 pound line on, if uh, on the top, let's say, 15 pound line, a size four and a big bit of bread, fine. Yeah. I can do that. Yeah. But um, the other thing, I ain't got a van. Having all, all them little separate bits of gear in that, it's a nightmare. Uh, it's not for me, you know. <laughs> Whereas I've had friends like, you know, my mate Brad, who I grew up for, uh, fishing Frogmore with and, and other lakes as well. You know, you'd, you'd let's say you'd have a, uh, if we went to, like, let's say, Stanborough or something, which is a day ticket, in our real early days, I'd catch five or six during the day off this margin spot and I've baited it a certain way and I've done this, done that, laid a certain rig down, whatever. And then out of nowhere, he'll have seven off the top, one on a zig, you know, like yeah, he's okay. just, and yeah, he's yeah. so fluid with it. But I think my approach has helped me with maybe, especially in the more recent years, targeting individual fish. Whereas him, he catches loads more than I do, but, or he did back then. He's a, sort of, he's a sea fisherman now, he lives in Cornwall. So, <laughs> but if he was fishing with me, he'd still, catch, he'd still like fish me all day long. But, but you catch the big end. Yeah, I mean, I'm not. I'm not saying I'm amazing at catching the big one, but I'll do it before he does. I'd say, and I'm yeah, sure he'd yeah. agree. But he's a better angler than I am, no doubt. In terms of choice of quarry, so obviously we we're, we're going to talk sort of the type of carp, the type of venues that you've gone, and we're going to talk through significant chapters in due course. But for you, you're not going to your day tickets generally now at all. You're targeting fish in environments and lakes that are. But I would say are in keeping with sort of, as I've said before, that stereotypical sort of BC type of carp fishing. What, what, where's that come from? Why is that? Is that an influence thing from you growing up? Is that just what floats your boat? How come that's come to be? We, you know, we were raised on Frogmore. So, yeah. you know, as a kid, you know, I'd be, uh, I'd be sleeping on the floor quite often or all the time until I got the bed chair. I was sleeping on the floor under a, a Daiwa Mission Brolly, 50 quid at the back of the magazine. Um, you know, I'd not really had the gear, but just, it was all makeshift. It was all, it was all, I mean, I wouldn't say hardcore, I don't really like the word, but it was really, as a kid, you know, like by yourself in the middle of the night over there. Yeah, Frogmore's um, got like a bit of a rep as well for being not the... Yeah, I, I think after the worst bit, I think, was was a lot of it was, was in your head, you know, like you, you've got... It's, pitch black at night mm. there's no one there you're on the just the gravel there's like gravel slopes to swim so they've changed a little bit no, they haven't really but there was a lot more trees and stuff and it was a bit more swampy back then and um you're laying on the floor and when you you know if i had a fish in the middle of the night and i used to fish right in the edge which not really anyone did you just have an eruption you know and you pick the rod up and i'd be shit scared the whole time <laughs> about everything around me it was like and you've got these trees that are glooming above you like that it's, you're almost like encapsulated by this lake you, you, it's like a dome around you of trees yeah. it was very spooky and I think that that has enabled me in, in the more recent year or, or over, over the whole time of my carp angling really to fish public waters waters that might be a bit rough waters where you might get a bit of trouble um, and I haven't had as much trouble as I did back then on down the lakes but um, it hardens you up you know like if I've it, I've done it re- fairly recently but if I've got a load of shit in my car and I've got a quick night. Hmm. Or there was a point where I was leaving my gear in my nan and granddad's garage when we was living in a flat. I go, right, I've got the rods in the car. I'll go and do a night. I just sleep on the floor. Like That was in November. It's not because I'm, you know, it's just because I want to go fishing. I didn't enjoy it. Like I caught one, which was the great part of the end, but I was, I was fucked for two days. Yeah. You know, so it, it sort of, it hardens you up. Um, but on the flip side, my technical ability was was pretty crap. So you, you, you're toughened up to fish certain waters, but you're not learning the free on a spot or you're not learning. It's not like you go to somewhere like Linear where it's like a factory of like amazing anglers, you know, because everyone's watching the top dog doing it a certain way. We never had that down there, really. We learned, we learned a way, like an old school way almost. Yeah, I see what you're saying. 
So it was more like that. We had sort of... Um, there was but I think that way is effective in terms of that environment, isn't it? Because it, ultimately you come to that conclusion with your angling and, and that type of fishing because that's what works on that venue. If yeah. you fish linear, conversely, mm. you'd have gone free on a spot and you'd have done that because yeah, yeah. that's what will get you those hits. When you when you talk when I talk about influence from you those early years obviously being on the lake and that environment and the type of fishing that it offered which we'll talk about that's obviously influenced your style of angling but outside of that at that time mm. I mean you're talking about when you were fifteen sixteen yeah. on Frogmore what what were your outside influences externally obviously Frogmore is pretty are you talking about individual anglers yeah, or yeah was it anglers was it magazines was it tv was it because obviously social media weren't really there no no there was there was no fa- facebook didn't exist at the time um it was myspace no one used it you know MySpace, there was there wasn't yeah. social media in in a fishing sense it was msn you ain't i remember you're, that. You're, you're, you're not school. you're not messaging terry Earn on msn are you or, or seeing what he's up to you're messaging Tell, how'd you get on a frogmore mate <laughs> on webcam um uh my yeah, influences um I suppose it, it was the people down there, I, I guess. Like, my mate who weren't an angler, he somehow got a stack of these uh, magazines, a big cart magazine and whatever. Yeah. And I'd look in there, I didn't know who any of them was. But just the blokes holding these massive cart, I think that's what did it for the carp fishing. Like, that's what, what got me into that. And uh, the first time we went carp fishing, me and Brad, he cast my rod out for me. That's how inex- inexperienced I was. I had a double on a Richwood, Richworth Tutti Frutti Oh, that's epic. <laughs> you know, um, but yeah. it was snowing and it, mate, it was wicked. But yeah, the influences, the boys down there, you know, John Stacey was one of them, uh, Paul Hill, um, Keith Spear. Um, there was the, the boys down there, Stella yeah. Man. There, it was a community and home life was was a bit mad, but, you know, as a kid. And I'd, I'd rather be sleeping on the floor, sometimes by yourself if I'm there midweek, other times on the weekends. I'd rather be there with them lot. It was a community, you know, like we'd all meet up around the bench and have a few beers or you, they'd make you a fry up in the morning or I could walk around and ponce a bit of party off of him, some pop-ups off of him. I remember going down there and poncing five pop-ups off someone and me and Brad, we, you know, smashing rigs long and, and, and we battered it. You know, we had loads. This wasn't on the leather pits on the lake next door and easier lake, but still people going down there on, on a weekend and blanking, you know, like, so they really... It was there was a lot of camaraderie there. It, yeah, it was just yeah, it was a different time. It was a completely different time. Um, and like if the World Cup was on, they get a TV down on on a generator. Um, I think that's how they did it. And we'd all sit there watching it, and then we go. Fit. It was just I've never experienced anything like it since. You know, that is a proper bit of the old school. By the time when I look when I listen to that, mm. yes, I've been on syndicates and it's been similar. But it, that sounds like you sort of old school Yately social type sort of, yeah. do you know what I mean? Like everybody's there to catch the carp, but they're also there to have a good time and, and be around each other. I feel like we wasn't there to catch the carp. No. If we caught one, it, it would be a bonus, but I couldn't give a toss if I caught or not. I was there. Sometimes I'd, I'd have a couple of beers, be drunk as a little 15 year old, side hook a pop up, fling it out. Cause I didn't care. I didn't care. I just wanted to be there, you know? And the influence wasn't, it was when I started fishing with the younger, it, it was a funny time there because it was like a, a boiling pot, if you like, for, for good anglers, young, sort of my age. And we'd all, there was five, six of us down there all together, mm. fishing different lakes and stuff, doing our own thing. But we would learn together. And uh, when I got with there, they were a little bit older than me. But when I started fishing around with them lot and, and become friend, good friends with them, you know, you start seeing the way that they're doing it and, and you start bouncing around fresh ideas not from a magazine because although I looked at my mate's magazines, the pictures, I never looked at rigs and I was too young at that point. This is a couple of, a few years later, but um, yeah, I, I suppose it was that really, it was meeting the younger lot and we just, yeah, we, we, we just, we did it so different down there to, to what the others were doing and we done well. And it was, it was great. You know, that's, and they, they were influenced by Terry Earn and that, and that's what got yeah. me into it. Yeah, so okay. before that, like, you know, I had Prologic alarms and, Die were bloody pro carp rods that were 25 quid for two, a two and a quarter test curve, but they were so bendy because they were old. Um, you know, I rubbish get, and all of a sudden I'm buying the Nevs and, and the, the, the yeah, Hearn yeah, rods and that. It's a bit right. embarrassing to say it now, but that's, that's the truth. I was influenced by more by them than I was by Terry Hearn. 
Because they were cool. in turn influenced by Terry, mate. Yeah, 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 hundred yeah, percent. Uh, yeah. You said there. You referenced that it was almost a uh, Frogmore at that age being a bit of a place of solace as well for you. You said that Cart was a bonus, but home life was mad. So you spent every waking minute down there. Yeah, yeah. I mean, pretty f- much f- for me, like you know, being at home, it was it was a mad time. I had a so I got into fishing mm. through a base my stepdad. So he took me. I always loved it. I don't know what it was. Always loved the water. I'd go, I'd walk round round Stamber as a kid before I'd, I'd gone fishing, and someone caught a fish. I remember in my head it was a goldfish, but it couldn't have been. It was probably a roach or something. I was like, "Whoa, like, that lives in there," you know. And then years down the line, uh, I went fishing with my stepdad twice, um, and I remember on the way back from our second fishing trip down Tingriff. You ever heard of Tingriff? No. Well, Bob Nudd was there. On a match. Oh, go on. Well, on my second session. So it's my second session with him. We The first session we'd done a night. Second session, it was just a day. We got back and we were having a barbecue that day with a load of friends and family around. And um, he'd got in and saw that my uncle was using the barbecue and just flipped out, went mental, you know. And he split up with mum on that day. And I was like, oh, I can't go fishing now. Because like, it was just getting into it. Yeah. Gutted, you know. But um, yeah, at the, the time, so, so going on a year... Um, we was doing a PowerPoint presentation in school. Brad was in my class and he goes, should we do it on fishing? Like, yeah, let's definitely do it on fishing. So we've done it on Bream Tent Cup. Um, <laughs> oh, hey, it was wicked. You How know? did that go down with the old school kids? Girls loved it. <laughs> yeah, I bet they did. Um, so yeah, we've done that. Um, and he was like, do you want to go fishing with me? Like this was on the day, you know, do you want to go fishing? My granddad will take you. And he was actually my second cousin in my class. Mad. What? I would have been about 12 at this point. And yeah, we started um, started going fishing. Uh, my stepdad, so at the time, my step, he, he weren't a nice bloke. He was violent. You know, he really wasn't. And he'd come in and kick the door in and stuff like that. And I'd be like, well, I'm going fishing. You lot, deal, you lot deal with it. I'm going fishing. I'm too young to be dealing with this stuff, you know. So sometimes I'd cycle down there, get my nan to take me. They didn't want me going. But in my eyes, I was safer sleeping on the floor down the lake than I was being at home. Do you know what I mean? So This is at 12, yeah? No, at that point, so he left at 12, 13, 14, Jeez, I'd say. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, it, it's it's one of them. But again, that hardened me up to do the type of fishing I'm fishing now. So it wasn't, it was a blessing in disguise. I think they all are blessings yeah. in disguise, you know. So, but then it, it could be why I love fishing so much because it's always been my solitude since I was a kid. Yeah. You know, yeah. and it always will be, I think. We'll see. Yeah, fair play, mate. That's um, yeah, that's interesting, isn't it? Fr- Frogmore, take me, take me to there. So obviously, you have said here <clears throat> we've got to the point where you're like fifteen, sixteen. You're down there. It is an infamous venue with regards to obviously tells wrote about it. Toadless, you talked about that. The actual makeup of the lake, f- small, isn't it? Three acres, two acres. It's small. It's like pretty shallow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and like. Pretty, you said, and you talked to us about before about the sort of water level as well changing and the, the sort of fishing. For you, your time on there, was it, you said that it was pretty much just being down there, living it and breathing it for a variety of different reasons. The actual fishing element, how did you progress on there over time? So it was living and breathing it to start with on the island pit. Then I went on to the school pit. Mm. Caught the, the big and out of there, it was like under the ice straight away. Um, so under I'd, the ice? Yeah, so I'd fish the island pit. And on the day sessions, I'd fish hard. I was doing a night. I was there to party, you know. Like, um, But it was just reactive fishing, tight to islands, loads of craze in there, like proper gravel pit. There was It was like a bit of an egg box as well. Mm. I mean, there was like 15 islands on there, maybe more. So Jeez. it was probably more than that, actually. Uh, savage fishing. So you'll learn. I, I had 10-pound diver sensor on, but I weren't losing them. I, was, I, I, I learned how to play these fish and then got onto the um, uh, school pit and... I wanted to do, I remember I wanted to do the night because I'd had two fish in two weeks from different lakes on there. Scorpio had nine in it, but it was tiny. It was like two acres or whatever. Yeah. And nine carp in there, but no one fished it. And, um, I had the big end. It wasn't a massive fish, mate. It was one of the best fish I've ever caught looking wise. I mean, I ditch caught it in, in the nineties and this was 10 years on probably 10 years. Yeah. And, um, how big did that go? It was 23 pound, but if I show you, it, look, it looks a lot bigger and it is amazing. Two-tone, chocolatey brown, sort of reddy colour, a real sort of deep fish. And everyone said, I remember, you know, James Turner used to say, because he, he never caught it, he said, mate, if that was on any other lake, it would have grown massive, massive and it would have been, you know, it's one of the best fish I've ever caught to this day, like top five for me. Um, 
So how'd you catch that? So basically, I'd gone down there. Um, my mate was on the island pit. I'd walked about I don't know a thousand yards down down the the causeway to fish the school pit because I didn't want to fish next to him. I yeah. don't know what it was. I just wanted to do you know. And I, I went down the school pit. I found two carp there. Like one there, one there. Flicked a couple of rigs on them, just bottom baits into the silt. Uh, it froze over that night. I had one. I, I, it playing froze it under the, over. You're playing it under the ice. Playing it under the ice. So I put it on the forum the next day on the Verulam Angling Forum. I caught this fish under the, you know, and um, I got a load. Of, I didn't have pictures of it. It's, it jumped out the net. I got loads of grief on there by grown men. Whatever. Fine, I get it. But they didn't believe me, you know. And I, the way I went about it probably wasn't ideal. But I was 15, and um, yeah, uh, I remember John Stacy said to me. He said, he said, go down there and catch that big one. So a week later, I wanted to do the night and I weren't allowed. Gutted. Because my mum, you know, she didn't like me going and have, it sounds bad, she didn't like me going and having fun. So I was, I was, so I rang my granddad the next day. I was like, please take me fishing. He picked me up, dropped me down there. And I'd, I forgot to say, there, there was like a finger bay, right? As, as wide as, as this room. It went for quite a way, littered with snags. And before I left, the only bit that didn't have ice in it was in the finger bay. So I'd waded with no waders. Just in 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 in. <laughs> this was in the last day of January. Uh, a couple of islands onto this tiny little island, no bigger than, sorry, no bigger than two of these sofas I'm sat on. Poured this bucket of particle in the edge. Come back a week later, with a, with a single rod, PVA bag on it, like that had been tied for a week. You know what I mean? <laughs> I, I don't know how. I don't know how it didn't. It it melted and um. So they're going to be there. They're going to be there. So I lowered a rig and I planned to do a night on this thing, on this, like as big as a brolly. Anyway, I lowered this rig. There was two fish there. Lowered this rig. I thought I'd spooked them. Fuck. Um, but then it, it turns out, it literally, I'd looked up about a foot and the big one had barged them both out the way and she went like that. And it just sort of sat there. And I went, you know, and then it just went bang. Like I turned its head. And as it done that, the, the whole bay had erupted. Yeah. So where, where it was frozen and I tipped this bucket on the only bit that hadn't frozen, I think, and it was only a foot deep or 18 inches deep, the whole lake was. I think that that had kept it like that. Yeah. Because it was freezing. And um, I think that, you know, there was eight, nine fish or whatever in the zone just eating a, a big, you know, a 20 litre bucket of particle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, yeah, the spot was like gravel, you know, it was mad. It, and before it was silt, they proper crated it out. And yeah, um, it, it erupted. It went mental, but I, it, it didn't take any line. It just went one swoop, bang. And um, where the fish had escaped my net the week before, because I, I didn't have, I didn't put a stake in the net, like open. I, I closed the arms, rolled it up and put a bank stick in. I didn't know. I was I was yeah, young and inexperienced. You yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, I caught that. And I was like, right, I'm going to go on the lever pit now. That's the next thing to do. You know, it's, it's the one. I weren't really there for the lever. Um, I was, but I didn't have that mindset to go and catch that lever. Mm. I was there to, I was just fishing. Um, but yeah, I caught a couple really quickly, like the big common in there. And then another common in two consecutive trips and um, just slinging chods like in the weed. So it's mares tail weed to the surface, getting up trees, finding them and just plopping rigs out, um, chod rigs out. Um, and just seeing the pop up uh, sort of nearby. So you're seeing these shadows in the weed. And uh, yeah, my first session, that was down in the summer bay. I'd had one, the big common, still alive now, proper old one. And then a week later, I had another one. Like, these are the best commons, like you know, amazing looking things, like so old. And they actually come from the school pit years and years before, and they, they were put in there. But yeah, um, God knows why. But um, yeah, yeah, it just sort of on there. It was a lot of opportunist fishing. I think I caught them all pretty much on on naked chods. Um, and the, I'm trying to think the yeah, there was one capture where. I see these two fish in this bay. There was 11 carp in there. Three acres, 11 carp. But you've got to think, right, in March, April, May, every single swim pretty much is taken. So for circuit yeah. water, you've got... Yeah, yeah, you know, of course. Like, you've got some of the top boys on there, you know? And I'm just this... Some of them just... I'm sure they just didn't like me on there because I was a young kid. You know, I had no gear. I didn't have a spod rod or a, or a marker rod or... I had two fishing rods and net. Little bag. No barra. You know what I mean? It, it was... It, and... You know, and I'd catch a couple as well. So. Was it pretty much a, a set sort of, rather than trying to find spots or do whatever, it was just observation then chuck a choddy? Was that pretty much how it, how it was? Oh, no, sometimes I'd be laying rigs down. I mean, yeah, one, one of the choddies, right, there was 
these fish were coming into this massive set of pads. You know how big them pads are. Mm. You've been down there, but huge set of pads. And I, I'd, I'd lay in between the pads like that. And I'd just stand there, you know, that's sort of how I got the heron name, stand there like that. And I'd see these fish come in and they'd come in, they'd miss it, come in, miss it, come in, miss it. So I'd see a sunken lily, I saw a sunken lily pad, so I plopped it on top of that. So what, choddy on top of the pad? Blatant choddy on top of a sunken pad. <sighs> blatant as you like, see it straight away, bang, you know? I, mean, I know it sounds an oddie, but no one else had done that. So why, how would that carp not see that as danger, you know? Because they, it, it, well, it clearly didn't, no. you know? It, would that have worked for the lever? Maybe, maybe not, who knows? But... It just went bang, doo, 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 jumped out of the water. Tom Lorraine was walking past as it as it had jumped out. So you see it, and he's like, oh, go get the camera. I netted it, and it was another like amazing common, you know. Like again, the, the best commons I've caught today, really. Um, so yeah, that you know, Frogmore was very much that. It was opportunist. It was better in the later on in the year because it quietened right down. Like, it was just my playground, you know. There all the time, six weeks holidays, the whole lot. Yeah. I'd, it was wicked. You referenced earlier, mate, when we talked about it, sort of, um, yeah, some sort of trouble or stuff going on when you were down there, mate. What type of stuff happened? Um, well, on the island pit, I remember there were these there were these boys who used to walk around. They were in their mid to late 20s. And they were from an area local called Cottermill, pretty rough. And obviously I was local to it, so I, I knew them and I knew the area and that. And they come up to you, do you get scared here at night, mate? No. Like all this sort of stuff. Oh, do you not get scared about getting robbed? Nah. Putting on a brave face. Um, and then, yeah, one night I, 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 uh, well, I woke up in the morning and half my gear was gone. It's completely gone. Oh. And my mate had his bait. They'd come down and these boys had come down and give me some bait a couple of weeks later. Because I got on quite well with them and I don't think they realised that they robbed me. Right. Um, I mean, they were wrong ones. Yeah, yeah. But you've got to get on with people otherwise they're going to do you. You know what I mean? So that's how it felt. So they've come come down a week later, found out that it was me, and given me a load of gear that they've obviously nicked from someone else. Yeah. Sorry, mate, we'll get you some fish and chips. Got some plum boilies. It weren't. It was my mate's Icelandic Redwood Caviar Carp Company, but, you know, he, they'd give me all this bait. I was like, he's going to think I've robbed him now. Yeah. It, it was one of them ones. But, um, yeah, so so that that kind of thing, you'd have crackheads at night, and uh, it, it just had a weird feel about it. It was a very strange place, but another one, it was... It was very close. Um, Tom Carey, one of the boys down there, he he was the one who bought me my bed chair when I was about 15. He saw I was sleeping on the floor. Oh. He was like, I'll go to Johnson Ross, I'll get your bed chair. And he went and got one, you know. And um, yeah, he he come down to see me and he'd done really well on that lake, but he'd sort of given up fishing and he, he still hasn't, doesn't do it. Now he's only young, 21 at the time. So six years older than, seven years older than me. And um and he'd done that, you know, how nice is that? But anyway, he'd come down to see me and we we're on the path and he's, uh, these chippos have walked past, gypsies have walked past. And they said, oh, you're doing the night, fella. You're doing the night. And I was like, uh, no, not tonight, mate. Are you doing that? They walked past five, six times and asked me the same thing. They were going to rob me, but they didn't know that inside this brolly was, was Tom and he had an English bull terrier. Yes. So the last time they said, you're doing the night, I said, yeah, I am, because it was getting dark and it was raining. And he, and he got out and he went, yeah, and so am I. And he was going to the gym and that. He was massive. And his dog was like this big English bull terrier. But it hammered it down with rain that night. And I think that was really my saving grace. Yeah. You know, he didn't do the night. And I was shitting myself all night. But yeah, there was loads of nights where you shit laying there, shitting your pants, scared, you know. Um, but again, it was the desire to catch these fish. Because I know I said about partying and all that. It was more the other lake. As soon as I was on here, I was proper fishing. Yeah. It was all about catching these carp. It wasn't about catching the lever for me. It was about just catching the carp. See the lever? You get close? Oh, yeah, I got close loads of times, yeah. Yeah, loads of times. Just noddy fishing, you know, like I didn't realise what I had to do. And this is the thing is that do you want bites or do you want to catch the big one? And that's something that I was yet to learn. So I was just fishing for carp. See yeah. a couple of carp fish for them. But really it was like I could have got the map, drew a couple of circles on it. It likes it here, likes it here. Spend most of my time there, whether I see it or not. You know, fish, maybe, maybe certain rigs, certain, don't, you know, particle was cheap. So mm. I, I wouldn't fish boilies because I couldn't afford it. Sometimes I'd go there with tin of sweet corn. But if I got hold of a massive bucket of park, I'd wade it out and dump it where I knew that they liked. Um, I just don't think it was the way to catch that one. And, and in hindsight, you know, hindsight's great, but I don't regret not catching it. It would have been lovely, but, you know, you, you, I'm not going to regret this path. Do you know what I mean? No, it's yeah. right. I get it. It's, it's also like, it is, as you say, like, you're going straight in there to your proper carp fishing first experience, being 
mate, a proper circuit water with a real sort mm. of prestigious carp in it that a lot of really good anglers are chasing. You, was it a loner? Was it a case of it being away from majority of the other fish, or did it did it have a certain character or a couple of fish that it hung around with? It'd normally be off the pack sort of thing. Yeah. Um, but it liked the finger bay. So so what I'd worked out, and this was as it was dying really, what I'd sort of worked out was was that it, it loved behind the point where Hearn caught caught her from. Yeah. So I was planning on getting down there through the winter and just fishing that zone. But it was it was uh, Mad at home, you know, and I just could not get out. Mm. I, I, you know, I don't want to bang on about it too much, but I had an alky mum. But at this point, my stepdad had actually died. It was crazy. It was like the wild, wild west at home. And I couldn't always get out. My mum didn't drive, mm. you know, so I, that was just scrapped. And any time I could get down there, I would. But I had a snap rod as well. So my point of my, one of my hands had <laughs> snapped. It was just a disaster. I lost one off of, uh, from that. And I'd caught, I'd, I'd had three bites on another session and lost two of them. And, um, but where, where, what was the question again? Sorry. The fact that it, it sort of, sort of was yeah, sorry. off the main path. So I had a plan in my head, but I couldn't yeah. execute it. Um, and yeah, like Nick Dayton, for example, I mentioned earlier, every now and then I just put, this was Facebook had just come out at this point. And I said, I'd put, Oh, can anyone take me down the lake? And Nick pick me up, take me down there. So I, I did a bit, um, but, and I knew what I had to do at this point, but by then I'd, I'd given up the fishing, to be honest. I, I had a few years off at that point. I was like, I'm done now. I can't be bothered. I'm going to go out. I'm going to get drunk. I'm going to try and get all the yeah, girls, yeah, yeah. all that kind of thing. And, yeah, yeah. You know, it was great. But to see, a few years after, a few years of doing that, I was like, I'm ready to go fishing again. Sold all my gear because I wanted to learn to cut hair. It was the only thing I could see myself doing. I didn't have the confidence to really go and do what I wanted to do at that point. Oh, I'll go get a career, you know, cut hair, whatever. Sold all my gear. Because I was getting like 30 quid a week just to watch these people cut in air and sweep up. So I needed money. So I was like, mm. if I sell my gear, I'll get a couple of grand. That'll keep me going until I know how to cut air, you know? So that's what I did. And, and I gave up with the fishing. Um, and yeah, sort of got back to it a few years later. And uh, it was, then a few years later, I was, it, it something had changed in my head. I was like, I'm, I'm ready now. I'm going to, I'm going for it, you know? I ain't faffing around anymore. I've, I'm earning like decent enough money. Um, I'm settled, got missus. She keeps me away from the pub, you know. Like I, yeah. nowadays, like I'm not. I've always been a, like a good person, so I might come from. It might be rough where I come from, but I'm not. I'm not one who who like who loves a drink. It's not me. I'm not one who loves drugs. I'm not. I'm not a wrong end. You know what I mean? I, I, and so I wouldn't. I wouldn't say that if I didn't have her, I'd be down the pub every day now. But at that time, being yeah, yeah. 18, 19, being 20, young, 21, yeah. yeah, I was down the pub every day. I got with her, I've been with her nine years now. And, and yeah, and I was like, I'm ready to go fishing now. I don't need to go out. I was trying hard for the girls, trying to get all these girls back then. <laughs> got to a point where I was like, no, I'm with her. I'm just going to go fishing. And that's all I'm going to do. I ain't going to go out no more, you know? Um, and I had a different, like, it's like something changed in my head. And I, and I sort of had worked something out about catching these carp from the break. It was great. I loved it. Bought a load of gear, got onto the, the otter pit, you know, and, and the res shortly after. Yeah, it was Favourite time, I'd say, in carp fishing, that was. It's interesting, mate. I've, I've, I've spoke to a lot of people and seen a lot of people sort of go through that that process. Maybe not that Frogmore start, but having a start in angling, hitting sort of 16, 17, 18, around there, going out. Some people ain't come back. Some mm. people it's just done. Maybe you'll go. they'll go once in a while if, if you drag them out, but it, it's not in them. Yeah. And then a few people, similar to yourself, who sort of come back and that there's got the same level of sort of keenness and everything that they had sort of preceding the, the sort of going out experience in life phase, mate. For you, you referenced a couple of places there. Um, where, where was the first place you came back to? Did you go back onto Frogmore or not? Yeah, I, I done a little bit. Like I, I was done though. I knew I, I went on the pike pit, caught one out of there in my first session, never went back. Um, right. Obviously in between all of this fishing, there's always other lakes like, you know, I'd fished other lakes, I'd had other tickets, but Frogmore was the standout. Yeah, of course. Um, and But the first lake since then, it's pretty much been a fish where I fish and that's it. Uh, but the first lake was was the Otter Pit, you know, the the, the big one in up the M1. Um, and yeah, that was, a, that was a bit of a grueler, to be honest. Like, Talk to me, give me the characteristics of that lake. Well, I weren't planning on fishing the lake. I was planning on fishing the lake next door uh, because I heard it's got half decent stock. 100 acres with a couple of hundred fish or something. Good carp as well, you know, good sized fish. Um, and yeah, I don't know. I, I, I'd parked up, or my mate had parked up 
we'd had a walk Brad. So I was still fishing with Brad a bit. The leather pit I fished all alone, but Brad had sort of dragged, because I, he was coming out with me, but he was always fishing. We'd go out till six in the morning and go, well, I'm going to go fishing now, mate. And he'd go fishing. So anyway, he'd said, right, let's go and try this lake. Let's go and give it a go, see what it's like. Because uh, our mate Luke Cole, who we used to fish down Frogmore with, had done well on there. So we got there, parked up, and we've walked, to get to this lake, we've walked past this 70 acre lake, 10 acre island in the middle, look raw as anything, a lot of concrete sort of structures about, uh, you know, absolutely covered in clearly and out of bounds like Norfolk reeds. From, yeah. You know, if you've got 70 acres, I'd say two thirds of it Norfolk reeds, can't even get to the edge. Um, I was just saying about it, big wind on, this was January. Straight away, I just fell in love. You know, I fell in. We walked around the other one. I was just like, meh. <laughs> I didn't really, I didn't care. And it had bigger carp. Well, yeah. I didn't know what this one had in it. Uh, I suppose yeah. that was another thing. But I knew it'd have to have carp in it because they, they must have flooded, you know, like all lakes flood when it when it rains. And I knew they were flood control lakes. So I knew that they'd flood into each other. I knew it had to have carp in it, but I, I went on the internet. And by this point, it was different. Like when I was a kid, we didn't have a computer. Even if you did have, it was a stupid white box that, you know, couldn't do anything on it really. It took forever. Now the internet was about and you could go on yeah. different websites and stuff. And uh, yeah, I went on, um, went online, couldn't find nothing. Could find loads about Lake Next Door, but nothing on this one. I was like, I'm fishing this one. So. Um, was that a fishing lake or a no, no, non-fishing lake? It was, it was a fishing lake, yeah. Right. Um, you could fish it on a day ticket. Okay. But no one checked it. It was almost like forgotten about. It was, it was great. So I started fishing there. Um it was clear. I think it was my second walk found Otted Carp. And on our third walk, I'd got in on the waders on this massive shallow zone that is unfishable. You can't get to it 400 yards from every bit of fishing bank. This was in May. Found the whole stock, about 25 carp. And yeah, I was just like, right, they're here now. Time to go catch them. I'd fished it. Savage winds and that on there, like, because it's so flat. That's because you couldn't get much more of a contrast there, could you, than, than where you've just come from, like yeah. a little intimate. I'd fished a couple of big pits. Had you? But, but this was just as well, one of them it was language. I, I didn't do much on there. And Glen Faber in the Lee Valley, like big waters. Yeah. One was 160, the other one was probably 80 acres or something. So, but this was now I got a car, you know, all of that stuff. And um, yeah, I just fell in love with it straight away. Uh, I lost a, a lot of fish that first. What stock did you see? What were you looking? You said 25 fish. What, what were we going to go into? Nothing. Massive. No? No. Which 30 I was pounder? Oh, uh, yeah. Quite a few, few 30s. A few 30s. But um, we did see one mirror, actually. Um, and it was better. Mm. But I hadn't. I didn't see a real big one until... I never told anyone this. But I hadn't, I'd never see a real big one until a year, a year down the line. I see a real big mirror. I see it a few times and I was, I ended up being there for that. Cause I went and come back. I lost quite, I lost like eight fish. How'd you lose them? Lost two to hook pulls in the May. No, to, to cut offs in the May in one session. And you have cut offs. I ain't doing that again. So I got on the braid. Obviously, yeah, I got on the braid, lost two to hook pulls. And then the weed was to the surface and I stu- I wouldn't do it now, but I stupidly fished it and just, just, just losing them in the weed. Mm. So I was like, right, go, go away to the reservoir, get onto that, go to the reservoir um, and come back in the spring. Come back in the spring, they flocked to the same zone again, got up this tree because I knew I got caught wading it, you're not allowed. So I got up this tree, was staring down, I see all these fish again, but of which I see a big mirror. And um, yeah, it was sort of game on then, you know. Um I'd just done the springs because it was unfishable after that. But every spring, I, up, yeah, 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 yeah. But I knew where I had to be every spring. It was like, well, they're going to be in that shallow zone, two hundred yards out, or they're going to be on the southwesterly, same corner or same end of the lake, a hundred yards out. I can cast to that. Mm. I can boat to that. You know, you, you weren't allowed to boat though, were you? No, <laughs> I got caught, so I can say it now. You know, um, but again, I was, you know, I, I was, I was doing one night a week or something. I was working. a 14 hour a day job. It was, I was managing a barbershop by this point and I didn't have much time and no one was on there. No, so I was like, no, no. if they're there every week for 50 weeks, I ain't catching them I, unless I'm doing, you know. Yeah. Uh, I wouldn't do it now, but at the time, oh, I'm glad I did it, you know. Uh, um, you definitely do it now, mate. No, I don't know. I don't know. I haven't done it for a long time. 
I just if that was a set of circumstances you were given, I just wouldn't want to fuck up my fishing. You know, I really wouldn't want to do it. But yeah, if I was somewhere where it was no fishing and it wasn't affecting anyone, um, like you know, not a club water, not a this, and it yeah. wasn't on oh, someone's yeah. back garden, then yeah, I would. Yeah, but I wouldn't do it on like I'd never do it on a club water. It's enough because it's unfair on everyone else. You know, it's just and I wouldn't feel right doing it. But this had no one there. This is what I mean. There's absolutely nobody yeah. on this. So yeah, done that. Started catching a few. Um, mainly there was a big boulders. There was no gravel. It was big boulders, the size of my head, you know, loads of them. So I would fish choddies, tall choddies amongst it, and just blast them out in, on the end of this wind. And you'd have multiple bites. There's only 20, 25 carp in there. Just yeah, no friendly free, then. Three bites. Yeah, big pit. Don't, I ain't seen rigs, a lot of them. Um, and uh, yeah, it, it was the absolute bollock. What I'd do is I'd, I'd cast the choddies out, run around the back, start flicking a few... Um, Baits out with a throwing stick, come back. Me, I, I can't. I hear my rod going. Shit, got to run back around. You know, you're never losing because there's nowhere for him to go. Big pit. You know, the island was the other side of the lake. Um, so yeah, that happened. And and the next spring, I'd done it again. But I'd only done one night that next spring. And the next spring, I I'd, I'd had a few by now. Yeah. What and, what they gone up to? You had a few a few days. Thirty. Okay. Yeah. Um, I had more than a few. You know, like I'd had. I think I'd had about I don't know twenty bites by then. Obviously, I lost the first however many, and I'd lost a couple in between. Soft mouths, I think. Well, no, no, because I'd landed in there, soft mouths. A lot of them hadn't been caught before. No, of there was no so. black rubbery lips there. They were yeah. perfect. And um, I've gone, right, I'm going to go next door now. I'm going to go and catch the bigger next door. And I was on there, first day, 31st of March, and I texted my mate and I said, I know where they are on the other lake. Just know with the weather and that. But I'd never seen them there that early, but there was something inside that just said, that's where they are. I'd only seen them there late April like to spawn yeah to spawn I just May, knew yeah. it was 31st of March and I knew and I knew that I was pissing in the wind here he just messaged me back saying don't get caught or something along them lines so I'd gone round the next day packed up I remember I sat there the sun was out wind was trickling and I had gigs on playing a bit of gigs and uh, gigs. I was like I, was, oh, I just thought this is lovely and I'd picked I'd raked a load of weed in I picked a load of insects out I can't remember why I was just bored got them in this pot crumbed up a load of bait in there, got my waders on, put the, the pot in, in the top of the waders, crushed boily. We were making our own it back then. And uh, it was a wicked bait, you know, and, and loads of um, insects in this pot. Went round, went round there, climbed up a tree, whole stock, bang on. Made a path through 40 or 50 yards of um, sort of dead, you know, it's 1st of April, dead um, Norfolk reeds. It's like, crack, crack, crack. Public as well. Like, you know, I was... Horrible. It was horrible, yeah, yeah. you know? Yeah. Um, and I knew these carp were twitchy. They, they were they were fine, but if they'd have seen me, they would have been twitchy because of the otters. They get otted all the time in mm. there. Luckily, they, they mainly done the small commons. Um, but anyway, um, I'd, I'd made this pathway through and I went and grabbed the rod, a net, a tripod camera. I knew it was happening. Like I knew. And this little tub, and I'd fed it to them beforehand, gone and got the gear, come back, and they were just going mental for it. They would have gone mental probably for anything. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. And I flicked this rod out and it Not was... Not a choddy, no? No, no, no. So, yeah, I, choddy's in the right place, you know. So if I'm flicking blind, choddy's. Yeah. If I'm placing it, I ain't putting a choddy on. What are you putting down? Um, It was, it was a really basic, a big hook, uh, knotless knot, hair just coming off the back, just the bottom bait on it, long braid, you know. Little, yeah, yeah, little, yeah. So no shrink tube, but a little split in the braid, uh, about that far from the hook. Almost acts like a bit. But you got to think, I was shaking tying this rig. I was like, oh, fucking hell, I've got to tie this rig. <laughs> you know, I've got to get it out there. Um, and I knew it was going on. And there was something inside that was just telling me that something amazing was going to happen on this day. Like, I just knew it. And if you know it, you're not going to stop until you get it. And that's what happened. <laughs> I flicked this rig out and these two commons come along. But they were about, and I was waiting, I was waiting. I thought, they're not close enough to the rig. I, I fluffed it. They're not getting this close. So I flicked it out again, spooked them because they'd gone or at least from my, if I was up the tree, I would have seen him, but I couldn't see him. I had yeah, this yeah, narrow yeah. corridor in, in the, in the Norfolk reeds. So anyway, I flicked out again, thinking the coast was clear. I'd waited a little while and I'd spooked these two commons. Bollocks. But then from the left, this mirror had come along and I see it. It was like, as it was twisting, I see all the whites and some of these scales were, as big as my, almost as big as my head, you know, these big white lines between the scales. And it must have been the fifth or sixth mouthful, which went bang like that. 
I thought, oh. fucking hell. You know, I picked it up and now I'm exposed. Everyone can see me because I'm out of the reeds now. Blatant, yeah. And um, I see the glint of uh, some binoculars as I was playing it. Anyway, <laughs> savage, absolutely savage. I've got it in. It blew my mind. Like nothing has blown my mind. There was a water before I hadn't mentioned, but it, 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 it was a similar kind of buzz. 160 acres, 30 carp, you know, like, and you, you had one out the edge. I waded a rig out again, plopped it. It swam past me in the rig in its mouth. Same thing, yeah, you know, amazing. like it, the impossible. And I'm, I'm, I'm not going for the impossible at the minute. I, I can't be asked. But at that point, <laughs> yeah, it felt like the impossible. And clearly it isn't the impossible. Like I'm sure loads of other anglers could go on there and do it. But at this time, no one had really. I don't know of anyone who had done that, who, who had fished the water extensively. I had the lake to myself the whole time. You know, there was one angler doing a bit here and there, but he didn't catch nothing. So, yeah, that is special, mate. That um, yeah, to see it all like amazing in my head. You know, if I'd have caught that from a, on a choddy, yeah. it would have been great, but it wouldn't have been the same thing. If I'd have caught one of them commons there, it would have been great. It would have been better than catching that mirror on a choddy out in the pot. It was just to see it come in, take the bait. You know, when time it doesn't exist anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. it's all gone, and you aren't human anymore. It's like. It's, I don't mean to sound cringy, but you all become this one thing and it is just amazing. You can't, I can't describe, I can't put it into words how good it was, it, you know. And anyway, got it in the net and there was no words for it. I was just amazed by it. Like you've said, you know, I don't know if you know what carp I'm referencing, but I know the carp on the mate. bank, mate. It, and I didn't know it. I didn't know anyone who caught it. No. Like, uh, and nothing's beat it since. But anyway, done the self takes done the self takes 10 second timer and I sort of knew that someone was coming round to give me a bollocking but I'd never never happened before never see a bailiff here really apart from one on a bike once and I've been there a fair amount over the few springs and um, he's come round I've seen him threw my gear in the bush and just walked he got the yeah. fish you let the fish go I've point. done the photos put yeah, it yeah, back yeah. but I knew I knew it, it he'd was, clocked it yeah, yeah. and then oh yeah you know it started giving me grief you shouldn't be fishing there and I said mate I said there's nothing you can say that's going to put this smile off my face. And he got his camera out to a picture, you know, because he's doing his protocol. I get it. I said, I'm sorry. I said, I've never break a rule here before, apart from the boating. Um, but I've always fished from swims and all that. And they ain't swims anyway. They're just little, little sort In of notches. grassy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, obviously no one fishes it. There's no swims. I said, I had to do it. I see it and I had to do it. And he said, let's go, let's go to a swim. And we'll sort it out. We've gone around to the swim and he went, you owe me for a day ticket. Gave him the money. I gave him a few quid for a beer. And he just said, on your way. Sound. Yeah. And that was it. So I, I drove home the whole time. Buzzing. I was shouting, come on, you know, oh, <laughs> like it was great. And I went, I had to go home to see the little ones and the missus and that. I, I was supposed to be home earlier. And this has happened a few times where I've just nicked it at the last minute. You know? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, you said you felt like it was going to happen. It was, it was on, yeah, mate. Yeah. You know, you just know. There are times. I've had loads of these times where you just know it's game on uh, and something Weird happens. I can't even describe it. I can't say. It. I think I spoke to L. L said the same thing. He said he's had times where he knows it's going to happen. I think mm. I can. I probably less than a handful of times. It's not that regular, but I, I know, know when I'm doing something weird that it's going to happen because I know like I'm putting these insects into this tub and I'm going and I, I or I've done it before where I'm fishing sharpened hooks on cray lakes where you do not put sharpened hooks out because yeah. I'm like I'm having the big one tonight. I just know it. I'd know it. It's not an arrogance because there, there isn't, there is no rhyme or reason as to why. You know when it's not going to happen. You know when it might happen. This is none, none of them. This is something else, and it's, it's only happened to me five, six, seven times. But take that, mate. Yeah, you just know. I'm so. normally like, yeah, it's definitely going to happen. I'll stay the extra night. <laughs> nothing. It's normally not when the rigs are out in the pond. It's normally when something just goes bang, and then you just start doing stuff with. And this is when, when you said, "What's my style of angling?" Earlier, I can't tell you because. Go with the flow is the thing. That's you, isn't it? Yeah. Not always, yeah. but but yeah, going with the flow, you know. And going with the flow might be putting out 50 kilos of bait and sitting on it for four days because that's what I feel is right at the time, you know. I think I've, I've talked about it loads to loads of different people. Sometimes you can, especially if you fish maybe the same venue or maybe a circuit war, you can get, I don't know, you can get almost like a bit of a drone mentality where you, you sort of go there with a, relative preconceived idea and i think the key is exactly that like having sometimes going there with no idea and fishing it on the merit as to what you see and what's going on and that can be hard to do when you're 
invested in a certain spot, a certain area, you've been putting bait in an area, or you've seen something happen, or you've witnessed something. But to go there as pure as that and just go on what you see every time, which is what you should do, yeah, mate, it takes it's something in you, isn't it, to, to sort of do that. A lot of people you see can't do that. They need a fixed sort of, I don't know, something to go or start with. But yeah, mate, I think you angle better when you do angle like that. It's always been the case, I think, when I think back to some of my sessions, I've done probably not what I thought I'd go there and do initially. Do you know what I mean? Mm. And, it, and it's worked out worked out well. From there, mate, which seems pretty mega, I'm guessing that you you sort of moved on once once you'd had those sort of that mega mirror, but also those few sort of instances where matey boys clocked you. Yeah. You know, the it was time circles to go. coming in, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, so before that, I'd actually had... So the first year, that was 2019, but 2016 was when I first started fishing there and it, and it grabbed me. Mm. And, but 2017, I'd done a bit. 2018, I, I didn't really do any fishing. I went on to a big Colm Valley water then, um, which was great. Like, I loved that, another one of them ones. But so 2016, I'd done a summer on the Otter Lake and then I've gone on to the res. Because I'd, done, I'd had eight losses and... Bear in mind, I ain't caught a carp since 2000 and whatever because I'd given up for how many years. Yeah. I'd done some France trips my uncle. I had an uncle who weren't very well at the time and he was like, mate, come with me to France. We've done three of them trips to like, you know, as like a, a bit... Pay of, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It, was, it was more for the beers and like, just... He was he used to smoke about 60 a day so I, I used to love it. Loads of Cronenbergs, loads of fags. You know, it was just <laughs> fry-ups and barbecues. It was yeah. great, you know, and, and loads of big, horrible carp as well. Bit that, that you know... I. I'm not ashamed to admit it. I loved it, you know, but um, yeah, 2016, I'd only caught them. I hadn't really caught anything from the UK for a while, apart from the one out of the Pike Pit and a couple of random ones. So gone on to the res after all them losses because I, I just needed somewhere else. And this was, I moved in with my missus by now. Right. With my missus' mum, not with my missus. Oh. So yeah, no, she's all right. So, um, so I moved in with my missus' mum, and uh, she, to be fair to her, she was sound. But I didn't like living with my own mum or my own family or my nan or whatever, you know. So, how am I going to? I like my own company. Mm. My missus luckily knows that, and she she's cool. Uh, but anyone else who doesn't, if you're trying to talk to me when I don't want to talk to anyone, you know, it's not their fault. It's it's something. It's the way I am. Nothing wrong. I like being quiet. I like, and that's why fishing. You know, you can be quiet. You can become a different animal, you know, this mm -hmm. humans on our phones and it's just rubbish in it sometimes. But so anyway, reservoir time, I was like, I spoke to a friend. He was like, mate, he's got on a reservoir. Like, I didn't know what was in there. Um, but at this point, a couple of anglers had, had fished it and done well. It was always like a five man syndicate. Then a club took hold of it. And I had that club ticket gone down there again. One of them waters is just something about it. There's something in the air there. Big res? How big? 65 okay, acres. So sim okay. Similar size. Yeah, wise. Um, Really silty, three hundred. So it's three hundred years old. Dug, dug by um, French prisoners of war during the Napoleon time. Bit of history around there. Massive oak trees and that. Lovely big dam wall. Public uh, near Boreham Wood. So a sort of yeah, sort of um, yeah, sort of outside of London, Hertfordshire. That kind of border there. Um, deep, so busy, shallow? weedy, deep and shallow. Okay, yeah, weedy in places. Um, and I fished a couple of sessions on fish on there. So I just lap, 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 lap till I found them. And um, I blasted choddies at him. Didn't he work. loves a chod, doesn't he? I didn't. I, I quit the chods after this. Stopped. <laughs> yeah, so I'd, 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 I'd had three sessions on fish where I didn't catch. And I was like, they ain't spooking off the rig. Mm. So it's, they're big pit carp again, you know, and they ain't been nailed a lot. Like, I know Ditch had had them. He caught them at the out of bounds. He, I can say that now because he's in Spain. But um, <laughs> he caught them right in the out of bounds. And I weren't doing that. This time it was a club. Or, uh, I've been a part of this club for a, quite a while, a long, long, long time. Uh, it's the same ticket as Vera, as Frogmore. So decided to, yeah, basically decided to fish bottom baits, just straight bottom baits and little traps, five, six boilies, a couple of tigers, you know, wading rigs. So I was wading rigs down this long bay where I was finding them. And on my first time of wading it, rather than casting, I'd seen, because casting in a bait is a nightmare little shallow bay you could be casting into surface weed or whatever yeah exactly so I waded all the way down this this bay and it was hairy like the silt was that deep that you'd have to go fast otherwise you'd sink just sink 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 you know and uh, anyway I'm wading down found some fish and I there was loads of cratered areas but something in my head was like don't put them in them put them on the bit that hadn't been cratered yet 
because they've obviously they've, they've harvested this. They've done that. This was yeah. the, this was the autumn, and waded back to the to the spot. As I've waded back, one of the big ones, a big linear, like classic looking linear, had brushed past my waders. Oh, going that way, not spooked. Got pictures of it on my phone. Bang, 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 bang. I'm taking pictures of it. Oh my god, you know, to find out which one it was. And I'd zoomed in and I'd worked out exactly which one it was. I was like, right, you know, he likes this bay. Um, so I concentrated on that bay after that. Uh, I had two that I got done that night and had to rewade the rig down there. Um, at nine o'clock at night, it was, da- it was dark. And again, Brad had done it. I didn't fish with Brad for a, a year, or, no, six, seven months. And he'd come done a night with me. He'd had the friendly mirror, fish known as the friendly. Um, I think where the fish's mouth, it, it'd been, it was disfigured slightly. It, it wasn't, uh, it looked like a normal carp's mouth. Yeah. It almost had lock jaw. Right. Could have been born with it. It yeah. was relying on angler's bait, I believe, rather than uh, on sieving through the silt like the others. So you catch it on a pop-up and stuff. Whereas these other ones, I believe you had to put a bottom bait down and almost bury it in the silt. Because they were just in that they had to, they, And they digged it. They dug it out. All got black mouths, all characters yeah, 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 silt yeah. feeders. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, clouds of silt and they're digging and your pop-up's up there. No. You ain't catching it. Especially when they're like this and the silt's going everywhere. Where's your pop-up going to go? It's going to be a zig. You know, because a pop-up's a light. You critically balance them. You'd foul looking, wouldn't you? Probably, yeah. 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 Um, yeah. Anyway, weighed this rig down. He's had friendly. I've had two. Um, a mid-20 and a common. Next week, I come back down, done the same. I found him in there, done the same thing. Next morning, yeah, weighed these rigs down, plot. Probably 100 yards down this. So the way you're fishing is you're on a swim. You can see no water apart from this little corridor here. Mm. And then... 20 yards out, you've got your rods on tall sticks that you've got to wade to when they go. Yeah. But these were around the corner facing that way. Right, okay. So they're down this bay. Yeah. I've had a drop back. I've heard it. I've ran, I ran out in, I used to have a pair of trainers on, no waders, just getting the trainers doo, 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 out. Uh, anyway, I've picked the rod up, got all the slacks that swam out the bay and yeah, mate, mad battle. Um, and uh, I've just seen long Lynn and it was the one that I see the week before brushed past me like, and after that, I just felt like, I smugly felt like I've cracked this. Little traps on the fish. That's it, you know? And um, after that, they'd sort of moved off. Yeah. But, so I, I I kept looking at his bay, couldn't find him, but I'd lap, lap, lap. And I kept seeing him in the car park bay, 170 yards out. Tried wading it, I couldn't wade it. It was too much. Like, I kept sinking. Yeah, yeah, the silt. And uh, I thought, right, okay. Time to go to millets, get a dinghy, 15 squid, uh, spray it up, you know. <laughs> and um, on, yeah, so I ended up dinghying out 170 yards and I just go out till I've, there was this Pontanagon, is it? This sort of lily, I can't say the word. It's like these like oval lilies, get a lot of them around here in the Essex right. water. But anyway, I've, I've gone to the end of this where I've been seeing them from the out of bounds. It's a big like public water. So there was people fed birds and stuff there. Sorry. I don't think that's why they were there though. Um, because they weren't that close in. Anyway, lowered, lowered a ring on the boat. One, two, three, back to the bank, broad daylight. And uh, yeah, next morning I'd had two fish. No, I'd had one. Week later, done the same. I had two. Week after that, done the same thing again. And, you know, I had some really nice ones, but um, done the same thing again. I'd met, I'd been on a night out. It was James Turner's 30th. And yeah, it ended yeah. up a bit hairy. It was just, Everyone wanted to kill each other for some weird reason. I was only 21 at the time or whatever. <laughs> and um, I can't imagine JT wanting to kill someone. No, nah, he, he weren't him. It's quite a level It weren't him. It weren't him. And uh, hopefully everyone's matured by now. But yeah, it was just one of them nights. And I remember I was, well, I was hungover and whatever. And the week before I'd been to a barbecue and I was hungover. And I'd fished shit and I'd end up fishing. So there was a gap where I blanked in between going to an inlet where it had gushed in. Right. I thought they got to like it there. But I was really, I was being lazy. I didn't want to pump the boat up. Yeah. So that week, I'd gone there, got the rigs out long. I'd met a friend, Kieran, who's like one of my best mates to this day. And this, you know, this was seven years ago or whatever. And I said to him, you come along, you fish next to me if you want. Because he, he didn't know where he fit. He was quite busy at this point. Yeah. Fish next to me, you know, whatever. So he's, I said, look, I'll wait till it's dark. We'll boat the rigs out. He's like, yeah, mate, let's fucking do it. You know, and he had one the week. He'd had one the week before. Um, Just whatever he was doing, I can't remember. But. I just sort of knew meeting him. I knew that he'd be a mate forever. I could just, it was, I don't yeah. know what it was. Like, mate, this kid, he's just, he's young as well. He's only like 16 at the time. And I could just, or 17. And I could just tell that he was, I didn't him to be a good angler. Not that matters, but he was a good bloke. And yeah, it sort of built, it sort of 
like blossom like sick friendship. But anyway, got this rig out and you're basically set up on a grassy verge, right? So you've got grassy verge high up. Then you've got your you brolly, but I had a picnic mm. bench there. So I had all my tea kit on it. And then you've got a path for the public car park there, housing estate at the end. Then you've got, a wall that goes up that you've got to basically climb over like Ninja Warrior, what? slide down a slope and then you've got like a, as long as this room is sort of flat ground, then you're in the water and then you've got to run out as far as all the sort of, yeah, but it's all junk everywhere. So you can't put your rods out. You've got to put your rods out far where the silt what starts. What junk is it? What do you mean? Like, like rocks? what you got? Yeah, like boulders and bikes and everything. Like Great. it's mental, you know? Um, and then you've got, yeah, you've got your rods, but it drops off quick then. Right. It's like you got your rods and then bang, nine foot, then it goes up. So anyway, rod's gone, buzzing. Uh, this mental battle at 170 yards and Kieran's there, he, you know, it was just, there was something about it. We were drinking iced coffees before that. I remember it was, but it was like, beep, and then you've got to do an obstacle course to get to your rods. And by then it was cold. So I had the waders on and um, yeah, he netted it. It was just, he was like, mate, he's a fucking big one. He's a big one. <laughs> and um, it, yeah, it's, basically there was a fish in there that just never got caught. Like it, it done probably two or three captures ever before that. And it was this long linear, um, one side's a linear, the other side's fairly bald, but mate, it's just, it's, you know, again, like one of the top sort of five for me of what, what I've caught and yeah, Go best, best time, thingy, best mate. times. And then yeah, Kieran, me and him have been mates ever since. So that session was like a massive in my life, you know, I talked to him most days and that. So yeah, reservoir was short and sweet. But um, once I caught them two linears, uh, yeah, but someone done my car. <laughs> with a, Someone had uh, done... What, the, someone who was else who's fishing? I don't know. I can't say. Mm. Speculated at the time, but I won't do that now, you know? Like, I don't know who Did it was. you make those captures public straight away? Yeah, I did, yeah. So I, I put them on Instagram. But, oh, but loads of people... But I say loads, not many people have done it. But let's say Valerie, for example, he was on there mm. a year before. Okay. He put them on Instagram and he'd come on there the year after to catch these lins. So... Well, I believe, I believe that was they were the ones the ones to have, you know. Yeah, so, yeah, um, so he'd put them on Instagram and come back, but he he got a bit of grief as well. I remember people saying to me that he was soaping swims and that, but right. the reality was, mate, Luke's wicked angler. Yeah, he's a terminator. Yeah, he he caught loads more than I did. He just got unlucky with the two lins, but he caught yeah. he caught two unbelievable ones. A, another one that's only done two captures ever. Him and. Elliot. Why Burr. do you think you're catching them? Do you think do you think the reason you caught those fishing on the deck? Yeah, hundred percent, and the dinghy. Dinghy helps. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the dinghy really helped. But if I'd done a year on there rather than six weeks, yeah, I would have fished. Yeah. On, I would have found them in the edge, and I would have fished on the deck, and I probably would have caught them anyway. I think pop ups, not are, the one in that. Cell. Not always. No, no, no. I think you know if you can be confident as to what kind of silt you're on, you can fish bottom baits in them. Silt is the best place to fish a bottom bait. Because if you're fishing a bottom bait on gravel, you can, especially on a hump with proper chunks of gravel, mm, you can dink the point. Horrible, yeah. Yeah, you're coming up, dog. Um, whereas if you're fishing, um, if you're fishing in silt, what's going to do your point? Mm. If it's just silt, nothing. Whereas a pop up is just wafting. I think a low pop up's better over gravel. I'll, I'll fish a bottom bait over gravel most of the time, but a, a Ronnie over gravel is better than hooking wise. Hook him wise, yeah, yeah, yeah. and a Ronnie over, and I think Ronnie's with or, or a low pop up, sorry, over little bits of bait on yeah. like a, a gravelly sort of is fine. Maybe not on a hump or a bar on top, but but you know when there's a bit of depth to it and it's they're going down, it's fine. It's when they're going up that the pop ups are blatant. I think, yeah, I think yeah, I don't yeah, know, yeah. you know, yeah. but um, I've yeah on the school pit I learned that pop ups stay away and so, you know on the school pit I fish pop ups. After I caught the big one, I go over now and stalk them every now and then. Put a pop up out, and they just go. Yeah. Put a bottom bait out, you'd normally get a bite, you know. So, yeah, yeah, it's interesting. I think I've caught my first first sort of run of fish stalking in the edge on a pop up after watching Ollie, and yeah. I felt wrong putting one out there. Yeah, yeah, latent spots like you just think no. Nah. Yeah, but then he says you you make and make a decision like the other. Spook off it in a go, or they they nail it, and he catches loads. Yeah, so. mate, he he catches them. I'm mm. not, who am I to argue with that? But I've certainly found that that yeah, I'd go with that school of thinking. But then there are situations, and I don't know what the variables are that mean it it, it equates to a pop up day. But that where 
they just want it. They'll have it. But yeah, yeah, mate, that's an incredible bit of angling. You you like to pick some some pretty mad venues, mate. It was some pretty mega carpet, th- didn't you? I think I think that's just what was local to me, yeah. or what was you know. Brad suggested that one, so I went there. My mate suggested that one. I walked around it, fell in love with it. But it, it could have been. It, it wasn't that I was seeking out these places. It just so happened, and um, I was okay with it because of Frogmore. So what I learned there, and because of home as well, you know. Like I've I've always been comfortable being uncomfortable and not realised it until you start fishing with others and they're like, mate, you fishing with well, you got a brolly because it's easy to put up and it's cheap and I've had it for ten years. Well, you got that bed chairs for you know, it's just what I yeah, know. You're not you're not full B C sort of um you don't seem too precious about the overall look or no, like, no. all that stuff. I'll get rinsed for like white trainers or fishing with Delkims or all that sort of stuff. People rinse me. It's like, mate, I, I honestly doesn't that care. doesn't bother me, you know? Like at all. People my mate used to say to me, just get yourself a pair of walking boots, mate. Then white train it. Well, why does it matter? You know, these are can slip on, them boots are a nightmare. Like it doesn't matter what you look like. It just matters if you're having fun and that's it, you know, as cringy as it sounds. Um Yeah, yeah. I don't totally. like all that big carp stuff. Like, I don't I don't hate it, but yeah, I just think Again, like so a, a lot of people would look at my setup as maybe more sort of big carp or whatever. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's just because it's old shit. It's not because I've put, I've purposely done it like that. But you know, yeah, it, yeah, it's more of a, an unorganic, accidental thing than it is a, a look. Do you know what I mean? Why don't you think you? Because obviously the, these all venues, and you said about locality and it being near, but they're all relatively similar. You you skipped over fishing one place to go and fish the place that we talked about with the unknown stock in the otter pit. Why don't you think you you sort of went down a more conventional path? Because I'm guessing at the time, there's a lot of bigger fish and nice fish in a prevalence of sort of day ticket venues and more circuity type waters. Why don't you think you got lured into that? Uh, I think the main thing was 700 quid for a syndicate or 500 quid for a syndicate. Nah, waiting list. Yeah, long. You know what I mean. Um, I, I look at the Woolpack fish and I think, mate, they're amazing. Mm. But I've seen them so many times. I know what it's going to be like to hold that. I know. I know where every scale is. You know. And if I went on there, I probably wouldn't do as well as these boys. But but let's just say I, I had the power to do that. I just I don't think I buzz the same. I've fished waters before. I've caught carp and I've gone didn't feel where I thought it would, you know? And then it's like, well, all that graft for this, you know, it's just not what it's supposed to be. But then every big carp that you catch, there's a downer. There's the come down afterwards. Yeah. And I've come to realise that, you know, the fishing that we do keeps it interesting. So chasing a big carp will keep everything interesting. You're going here, you're going there, different lake every year or two. Um, different kinds of fishing so that keeps you going it keeps you motivated but the big one catching the big one ain't the one the, you know it keeps you going great but the good thing is the mates that uh, it, it's been said so many times it sounds cringy but it's the mates that you get along the way mm. it's the weird things that happen it's the being outside it's basically the things that you're not chasing are the best things about carp fishing you know, like I see a bar now buzzing, love bar now. So it's one thing I've seen two fishing now and it's just like the best feeling in the world. Um, uh, being on the, the teeth of a storm, like it makes you feel, I hate it because it's scary, but afterwards it's all flat calm and you just feel like alive, you know, you don't get that in a box at home, in a bloody square house. Mm. It, you know, we, we, we live our lives in boxes, in cars and in houses and at work in offices and staring at the fucking square thing in your pocket and that when you wake up to them trees going around there's nothing more fluid than it you know I know it sounds airy fairy and whatever but that is the truth of it for me for me is that I go to catch these carp that's why I go but if I don't catch them I still get all the other stuff along the way that's far better than catching that carp will ever be because when you catch it you go home you're looking at the pictures it's not the same oh, you, you, that moment is great Mm-hmm. The adrenaline rush. Mm. It's just a dopamine hit, really, and an adrenaline. Yeah. You know, and you get a dopamine hit on your phone. You get it anywhere. The big carp is not what it is about. It is about everything else. And it could be it, it could be the barbecue with your mate. It could be the, the big pit. It could be the watching this carp take your hook. But it, all of that stuff is what it's really about, is getting out of this, you know, this sort of system that we've 
been born into that we had no choice about being born into, you know, work and all that stuff that it's the trap. And this here is a way out, a temporary way out of the trap. So, and I've, I've realized that and that's made fishing far better because now I'll tell you what, I only realized it a couple of months ago, but it was, I caught a big one and I was just like, wow, this is amazing. And I got home and I'm staring at the photos, watching the video, thinking, what is all this about? It's not reliving the moment. Mm. It's a worse version of the moment. It's getting dulled down every time I look at it. How about, and then, I, and then it was almost like a little mini epiphany of, right, okay, so now I know why, why we really do it because I had the best year last year fishing. I enjoyed every single minute of it. I didn't get involved in no lake politics of everyone. I do my own thing when I go fishing. I don't text them. You're down the lake, mate. None of that. I just go fishing, enjoy it, get a couple of mates down who don't, non-angler mates sometimes, barbecues, you know, uh, catch out of old fishing mates, enjoy the weather. You know, I was barricading myself because it's so public the lake I'm currently fishing, barricading myself off a lot and stuff. I'm just being trapped in that little swim, my own little domain, my temporary house that I've built yeah. where it's all outside. That is, is great. I love it. And, and you know, I'm doing two nights, uh, three nights, sorry, after this. And I can't wait because I know that I'm going to trap, I'm going to box myself in somewhere, create my own little mini world for a, a few days. Uh, Cause it's so rare that I do that as well. Cause it's normally overnight or, or a day and a night or something. Uh, yeah. It's like extra special. So yeah, like, to round it off, like without rambling too much, it ain't about a big cup. Fair, mate. The, your significant chapters post this, mate. We, we've got to a point where you've done incredibly well on a, on a few venues that are maybe a slight bit off the beaten track. You're angling from that point. Where where Where's the next significant chapter? I would say it was going back to the sort of Frogmore style of angling again, you know, um, crayfish. Crayfish weren't actually in the leather pit, but they were in the other, other lake and they were yeah. mad. Crayfish gravel pit small, intimate, clear, weedy, all that sort of stuff. So, and a club lake as well, busy. So I'd struggled that year. I'd gone on to the lake next door. But I just weren't feeling it. I'd had a couple, weren't feeling it. Gone here and there, weren't feeling it. Got another water in the Lee Valley, weren't feeling that. So I'd, I'd done a bit of bouncing around and the autumn had come around and I'd caught that mirror, but that was about it. And um, I had a ticket. No, I bought a ticket, met a bloke in the pub for this consortium uh known as slight lane yeah i'm not gonna it's not gonna blow the head off it because it's blown off already it's yeah. blown off when i fished it yeah i've had a few messages since because i've done this hypocrisy video it was based around a bit of that yeah and um yeah basically they they had um messaged me afterwards and been like oh, you've blown it up it's like mate it, you can never get a swim here you know what i mean it is what it yeah, is there's, there's four thousand members who can fish this place yeah you know there's consortium there's it's probably more there's 10 clubs but anyway it's going back to that hustle and bustle Little Lake, uh, got the ticket, met a bloke in the pub, 50 quid, bought him a beer, done the off, got down there and where it, where it was the autumn and you've got, I think it was five acres, this lake, uh, stuffed full of craze. It was a nightmare. But there was, it was a decent stock, 40 odd carp, something like that. Um, but yeah, the winter was approaching and I hadn't caught nothing. And uh, I think November, I'd, I'd done four nights, baited this corner and the carpet got on it, showing and that, but it, low fireworks sort of time. And it was just a nightmare. I felt like they would go as soon as the fireworks started. Craze had come in and it was all fucked. So on my third or fourth night of fishing that spot, I just seen <laughs> like opposite further down. And it was the only show I'd seen at that point. So anyway, I'd gone round, sort of lined it up and that. And there was a big bush to my left, to my right. And it, it looked prime, you know. And you could actually walk down the bush, like down the bank, out of the swim, shove your rod in the bush, lower it in, see it all, and yeah. then walk back. I was like, bang on. And uh, I sort of knew it would be a maggot thing. I just had this thing in my head. I, thought of, I sort of thought maggots, like a bit of crumb in that. And yeah, first night of doing that, um, blank the night, a mate of mine had come down during the day to, just to come and have a look at the lake because we'd actually fished this water twice, two nights when we were kids. Okay. And he'd had one out of there. Um, he'd done more time on it because I think he'd done a summer or something with his mate and then he'd gone on and, and fished. Anyway, so he'd this one fish and I'd, he was coming down from where he lived quite far away to come see me and I thought I'd leave the rods out but just because it looks cool, have a cup of tea, rods out, all that rubbish, silly really. And I'd, I thought, 
but I'll, I'll, we'll do a lap and I'll go so I'm going to pre bait so I've got the rods out but I've pre baited about two not a lot two kilo of, of crumb and maggots and hemp and that on the rod that I just blanked from <laughs> so I got back to but the, the rod's still in rod's still in because the rods are only there just to have a cup of tea with the rods out it yeah, sounds yeah, I had yeah. another rod out anyway as I've as I've said as I've got back as this fish has waddled out and it was a, a real scaly mad looking mirror it was wicked I've never seen a picture of it before that, ever. Oh, no, I had, I'd seen my mate Tom Lorraine's photo, actually, but it looked different. I didn't notice that at the time. Anyway, within, it got down an hour later, or maybe half hour later, whatever. I had a cup of tea, packed up. Just as I was about to do the first rod, the second rod, bang, whipped round. But all, the, all this bait had come in, obviously, now the up bait. So I'd had to, anyway, lost it, right? Oh. It was savage. I'm fishing, I don't know, maybe 50 pound braid, 60 pound leaders, that's uh, mono leaders. It, it, it done me in a snack and I'd come down three, three days later, got, climbed over the tree and used a storm pole and I actually got the rig out. Right. Because so, I don't like leaving Such, stuff yeah, in. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I got the rig out and um, I think when carp put you in snags, one decent tree is like a disgorger. So they hit it and it just goes bang. Because mm. you need that bounce for the hook to stay in. Otherwise it just rip out. And uh, I think where it didn't have that, and I'm pretty sure I know what hooked anyway. Now, in hindsight, it weren't that one. So anyway, got the rig out, come back a couple of days later. And I've always done a night a week. And then if I catch big and I'll have six weeks off or whatever to spend some time with the family and really immerse myself in that because I need, when I'm my head's on fishing, it's on fishing. Yeah, It's unfair on them. I need to give them some time after, you know, when you've got kids and that, you only get them once. Mm. So anyway, I decided, I thought, well, I'm going to start doing two nights a week now. Overnight, as I do a Sunday and a Wednesday. I said, is that all right? Yep, yeah, no worries. And we were rolling bait at the time. And I was like, we've, ro- we've like rolled like under key. It's in the freezer. Like, Let's just, you know. He was like, yeah, mate, go fishing. So started doing it. And I was pretty much catching every week. And the first fish I had was the one that he'd had 12 years previous, whatever it was, no. uh, which was mad. And then the second one I'd had was that mirror, the mad looking one. It's got like a, almost like a Batman sort of head tail on it and like huge scales. In the winter by now, you know, well, well, Ollie would call it late autumn, but uh, <laughs> I call it winter, it was cold, you know, it, it was two degrees that night. Um, and then it was just consistent after that, you know, but um, throughout January, February. Still on the maggots? Anytime I'd go there without maggots, I'd blank. Were you using maggots on the hook as well? Uh, yeah, yeah, big ball of maggots. Big ball of maggots, yeah. Rook bait. Yeah, so I'd use a, I'd use a, um, no, I, sorry, it weren't a big ball. So I'd use a, a trimmed down wafter. Yeah. Really small. And then I would use, and I was, because I was confident I was catching, I never wrapped it with crazy stuff or anything. I was going to say, what about the crazy? I just thought the carpery, I'm pre-baiting. I'm going, I was going there every day to bait up. Yeah. Every single day, no matter what. With crim and, and maggot? Yeah. It was expensive. Mm. Some days I put two handfuls in. Yeah, okay. But um, anyway, it, it was one of them. Like, mate, he was fishing there at the time, he blanked 60 nights. Jesus. You know, it was tricky. It weren't rock hard. It was tricky. Well, was it tricky because of the craze or tricky because of this? There's, there's just you got to think. You got to think, right? Cray, Cray Lakes in general, you've got craze decimate. They eat everything. Yeah, yeah, mental. You know, so you, you generally speaking, when the carp comes along in the morning, your rig is off the hump that you put it on. Mm. Your um, so yeah, your rig's off the hump, no bait there, and by the time the carp come in, if they do come in, you have fucked it. <laughs> there's no, it's it's done. So yeah. everyone's blanking because they're fishing. You don't fish. You, you don't fish like you'd normally fish. You need to cray proof yourself, you know, and that's eight ounce leads, uh, you know, not sharpen. Don't sharpen your hook. Cray proof rigs. People fish your multi rigs on there. Well, cray can just pull that. It's done. Your rig ain't fishing anymore. You know, um, and pre baiting is massive because I've, yeah, pre baiting is huge for, for the crays, 100%. Um, Cause you're getting the carp in, crays go on the lead up to your session and it was busy. So I go down there sometimes there'd be people in the swim mm. or I'd have to, or there's people next door and then I'd have to come back at midnight and sneak it in. You know, it was, it was a lot of effort. Um, but yeah, I'd, I'd had like the two, the second, third sort of in command, if you like, and pretty quickly over the winter. But I just thought it ain't the one for the common in the winter. I feel like it's spring. You know, and common, common was the biggest fish in there, right? Yeah, sorry, I hadn't explained it. So there was a 40, biggest weight dumps 45, 
but a real old common. Been in there, been in the lake next door for a very long time. Then moved on to this one. Okay. Really old. I mean, it's on its way out now. It's that old. It's, it's sort of doing thirty nines now. But it, when I caught it, it did look great. It was, you know, it was on the back end of its life, no doubt. But um, it just looked bloody good. And um, anyway, this was twenty nineteen into twenty twenty. March comes along. Last session, I'd had three. You know, in a night, it was just, it was it was on game one. It was going to happen. It was. So, this is the same pre-baited zone. No, no, fish, fish, three different swims, okay. but pre-baited. So I would move along when I felt like the time was right. When it, you know, I just again, you just sort of. There was three significant sets of snags on this lake, right. and I think on small lakes, pressure, significant yeah, snags, yeah, yeah, yeah. big pits, not always. Small lakes, you find. Go get the map out. Circle the biggest snags you can find and then you just concentrate on it it's not always the way to catch them but it's the, my, my way on them sort of lakes mm. and um done the first set gone to the second set started finding them in there catching them first night i lost one blanked five six nights then i, I had one of the real big ones a chocolatey mirror sort of dustbinny kind of shape um like sparsely scaled dark as you like yeah little it was a wicked fish but I was sort of, I never buzzed as much as I should because I wanted the common and it just wasn't doing it, you know. I was buzzing with all of them, but I was like, I just want that common really. Couldn't give a toss about these ones. (laughs) Sounds bad, but you can't help the way you feel. No, no, no. Um, And then we went into lockdown. So I'd had three fish, gone into lockdown. Gutted. I knew it was coming. Bloody lockdown. And um, (laughs) anyway, I thought I ain't listening to it because I I think it's a load of rubbish, but that's another thing. I'm going to go, I'm going to go there and if there's people fishing, I'm fishing. And on their website, it was like, oh, we're going to continue fishing. Great. Perfect. So I went and done one more night on there and there were, there were people everywhere. Every swim. Yeah, much. of course there was. Got in the swim. In the night, someone, because it's, there's like a, the lee navigation runs through. Right. And there was people up and down the towpath and the people live on the boats and they're all putting on these online on fake, diff, diff Facebook and stuff. There's people fishing down the, and we had to go. I get it at the time. It was scary for everyone. You know, but I knew it was rubbish or sorry, I believe it was rubbish. So I was like, I'm sort of going to do what I want. But after that, I just, I stopped fishing. I had loads, I had loads of barbecues and, and whatnot with the missus and I stopped working for a bit and all that. And it was, you know, I just deleted it out of my head. Fine. Anyway, ended up going to a few different places after that. Uh, come back in 2021. So I've moved house by this point. I was moving right. house and I hadn't been fishing for a while. I had a St. Ives ticket and I was struggling, doing one night over there, bouncing between the lakes. Ed weren't in it. I didn't really like the place, to be honest. Right. Um, Why not? just wasn't, it had all the ingredients. I was going to say. If but I, it I... just didn't do that thing that other places have done. And I remember my mate saying, do you think it's daunting or is it's like, no, because I fish thingy in, Col- in the Col- 160 mm. acres. Mm. Every week I was there. I loved it. This ain't that. It's just not doing it for me. But it, it would do it for someone else because it was wicked. Um, but anyway, fish a few other waters. I've gone back there in the autumn of 21. And I, w- I was a broken man at that point. We've moved house. The lockdowns and that, I continue to work in it because I, I have to be my family. I'm a barber. I, yeah. I can't just not work. And where I'd worked in a shop and then gone self-employed, I didn't have the three years of books. I only had a year, so I couldn't get the grant, nothing. I was getting nothing, you know, and, you know, your mates and that as well. No one really understood what was going on at home. Yeah, 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 okay. I've got to feed my family, you know. Of course you have. So yeah. I was working and um, not doing much fishing. And uh, fuel, was that when fuel rocketed up? No, it was a year after. But oh, yeah, yeah. it was, money was tight, you know. Like of it, it was, we rinsed sort of what we had in the first couple of months. And then it was like work so I cut an air on the slide but I wasn't doing very well because I weren't promoting it and uh, yeah. the, mate, pretty much everyone had asked me to but I was being very selective because at this point I hated it and I didn't want to cut so, so I just wanted to make enough money for us to survive that was it I wasn't going to take the piss I wasn't going to charge silly money I wasn't going to pretend like oh we're all you know I just did what I had to do and we was moving house it was it was one of the it, we would you know, decorating all sorts. It, it was a busy, busy time. We moved back in with Mrs. Mum for six weeks and I was, I was struggling. Yeah. It was hard work. You know, it was like explosion time. And I said to my missus, just about to move in. And I said, I need to go fishing. She was like, yeah, go, go. So 
got back on, got another ticket, got back on this lake. I rang mate who I met down the pub and I was like, hello mate, I didn't rejoin because of the lockdown, blah, blah. He was like, yeah mate, COVID discount is your ticket. Two days later, it was in, it was in the thing, uh, in the letterbox. So started fishing it again and the third significant set of snags, first place I walked to see the common in there. Straight away, with the whole stock, it was like, whoa. Right, you know, amongst all of them, right. Yeah, yeah, there was, all, all of them were there. I'll start pre-baiting this one. And it involved a bushwhacker, right? Go on a boy. <laughs> Should have just said a baiting pole. It involved a baiting pole. I was shoving it. So basically, I couldn't have fished it. I couldn't have fished this spot the conventional way. So you imagine you've got a massive rectangle and I'm in the corner of this rectangle. Then you've got the shorter edge of the rectangle is the outer bound snags. No yeah. swims in there. Yeah. Halfway along, there's a gap in the snags. You can't cast to it. If you had a bushwhacker, you could fish the edge of it. I wanted to fish in it. So no one could mess up with my pre-baiting that I was going to do. Because I was only getting, I was doing like eight, nine hour sessions. I was getting there, well, I was getting there sometimes at between 12 and three in the morning, getting the rig out and leaving at seven, eight in the morning. Right. You know, because it was that limited. I was trying to do as much work as I could decorate, live, moving into the house. Full on. It was mad, obviously with a little one and the dog and that. He was coming with me at the time. Anyway, I worked out a way of putting a glow stick on so I could see it at night going round to the snags and shoving the pole out, seeing the, the light, casting over the pole, running round, dragging the lead in, the bare lead, that I, uh, and getting all the line, picking it up, putting a rig on, and then putting it on the spoon, running round, reeling all the slack so it's tight, yes, it's tight. and then dropping it on the pre-baited spot. So it, it takes me hours sometimes yeah, to get this right out. You're doing yeah. it in the dark towards snags. It was an absolute nightmare. And I was tired. I, I was pretty broken, you know, at the time. And um, I, I, I was, th- this is just the truth, right? I'll, I'll say the truth here. I was, I'm not, I've never been a weed smoker, nothing like that. But I was, I was living, we were living with her mum and her brother lived there. And every mm. night it was like, go on, have a bit of that. And I was using it as a bit of a chill out thing. It's never been for me. Yeah. When I was, you know, fifth, so, and I knew I needed to get out of that. Yeah. I just, I couldn't, you know, I've done six weeks. Every day. Not a lot, because when you, you don't do it, a couple of puffs and you're done. But that's just the truth, you know. I know it could, people might not like it, but, you know, I'm an open book and, and that's what it was. So anyway, I knew I needed to get out of it. I'm not that person. Like, it just ain't me. But I was using it so I could decorate work, look after the little one. It was only in the evenings, like, when they were all asleep yeah. and all this. And then, and it, it was a coping mechanism because I didn't have the fishing. Exactly. And all of us, yeah. fi- aren't carp anglers, a lot of us got addictive personalities. Luckily, that's the only thing I've ever been addicted to. So anyway, um, I'm finally getting out of this hole. I caught one on the first night and then I've blanked a couple of nights. But then I, I start banging them, banging them, banging them, banging them. Off the maggots? You ain't on maggots? Or you still- uh, yeah, I'm on maggots. Yeah. So on the first session I wasn't, but after that, I got back on the maggots. Yeah. And it was only one a night because I, I couldn't get the rig back out. Yeah. But I was catching, I caught one of the, the, the sort of fourth, the third big mirror. So fourth in command, if you like. Uh, that was about 32-ish. Um, but that's thirty nine pounder now. The other wow. two, the other two are high forties now. I had them. Oh, sorry, high thirties now. Um, they're only a little bit smaller, but you know, like it doesn't matter anyway. A mid thirties, a mid thirty, you know. But, um, yeah, mate. Anyway, I had these fish, and I, I, yeah, I was just I was busy in life. So I, over the winter, I done a couple of nights. It was sort of the bait thing that I was doing. My friend was sort of going down the pan for me. Um, it was just it was just. Yeah. So to do, because I was doing that at the same time. So I was going up there and doing that. Mate, that is full on. Yeah, so Life was, there is not, oh, mate. Oh, it was one day a week or one, or sometimes two if I could, rolling bait. Three, four days cutting air, but I'd do a long days. I'd some, I'd start eight, finish at eight, nine. And then obviously weekends, I went never fishing on the weekends with little ones. No, like no, that. no, no, no. Um, and, and doing the house up and all of that. And, and we got the flu at the time or whatever you want to call it. <laughs> It was just fucking mental. But yeah, oh, look, everyone goes through stuff in life. I'm not, it's not a sob story, but I'm just saying at the time, the fishing was the saviour for me. It yeah, got me yeah, out yeah. of the hole, you know, it was great. Like, and anyway, I think that winter I sort of worked out where I wanted to go and I was like, right, fishing in, you know, the, the angling sort of, I knew where I wanted to go with it. Yeah, of course. With the media stuff and that. Yeah. I was in a better place. I'd started working in a shop for sort of consistent work, less hours. My missus was working in a freezer at the time. Uh, for Ricardo doing the nights, so she I was doing the day, she was doing the nights. Oh my god! It was you got to do, you got to do. We live in an expensive area, you yeah, know. Yeah, like yeah. we live in 
Harpenden, Hertfordshire, right? I was I was born in St Albans. Like it's a city. I went, I was born in a council estate, but still more expensive than a council estate in Hull. Yeah, ten yeah, times yeah. the price. So you know. Um, but anyway, done that. Uh, got back on it on the spring, and I'd sacked off the the, the bait by then, and I had this job. It was all settled. Millie had fell pregnant. She had a bit of the morning sickness and that, and, I, and once that was all settled and that, I was like, right, here we go. Time to go fishing now, and I just went hard. Every day again, walking it, baiting it, the whole shebang. And it's a bit of a pattern with my fishing. I do I do hard stints and then give up. So, yeah, yeah. you know, I might have given you the sub stories where I'd not fish, but there's other times where I'm like, right, I'm going to go chill and have barbecues for six weeks. So anyway, done that. Uh, found, I'd, I'd had an, an idea about this open water spot. I just had this idea. So I was baiting this spot, baiting this spot, baiting this spot. Four sessions into it, I'd I was up this tree or three sessions into it, I was up this tree and I'd look down and I'd see the common with the big mirror that I caught, like sort of waddle into this big set of snags to my left, mm. which I'd fish the other side of these snags. And it looked like it had been, it looked weird. It was fishy. It was, it was, it looked a bit sketchy. Like it didn't want to be in the open water. So I was like, right, okay, that's been caught. But no one had told me, it, you know, I didn't talk to anyone. Anyway, next morning, I got my phone out on Instagram, see the common. Everyone pulled off. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, I'm just going to stay on. I'm just going to carry on. I didn't fish the next week, but I, bait, I, I baited the long spot. Um, but then this thing was niggling me. I, I got back down there two weeks after and I didn't expect to catch it. I didn't see it, but I see all the big mirrors in the, in the snacks to the left. That open water spot, it was getting cleaner, but I hadn't seen anything there. Bang that rod out, and I waded. You're not allowed to wade. <laughs> I waded down the margin left and flicked this rig out. And um, yeah, I it just I I knew it was game on because I put a sharpened hook on. I just had this feeling just before I done the rod. I was He's like another one of his little feelings. It just, there's been a few that I missed. Sorry, there's been a few that I missed as well. But yeah, I just had this thing. And I was like, and obviously I've skipped like Norvi and that. I've skipped a few bits. I'm just going on this campaign here. But um, yeah, I've, I've put this sharp and look on, big, big lead, waded and I've just lit a slight flick, dong like that. Right. I think I put out two gallon of maggots over that rod. A lot of maggots. Yeah, it's a fair few Two maggots. buckets of maggots. And I was just going, oh, no, I was, yeah, I was big catapult, bang, 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 bang for about an hour. Um, and... I knew it was game on that much that, you know, I'd never, again, never waded or anything like that on the take. The margins are really deep, probably is pretty dangerous. I do it very safely. I get it. But matey was opposite. And I just thought, I don't care. I'm going to catch this common tonight. So I weren't bothered. And I rang my mate Kane. He's always, throughout the years, Frogmore and that, he used to bring his moped down the lake and he used to come sit with us, have a couple of beers. He's my best mate, but he's not an angler. He'd come down, okay. got a curry. I bought six asahis, three asahis each. Had these beers. I was just rubbing my hands together. He was like, yeah, it's going to happen. And he's like, oh, ring me when it happens. I'll come down, whatever. Anyway, he's done the off. As soon as he's done the off, I'm getting savage liners. On Sav- the left-hander? On the left-hander. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which, before I got there, I thought I might put a rod there, but I didn't, I weren't baiting that spot. Mm. Anyway, I woke up at four in the morning. I got out the thing, had a look, on the long spot. <laughs> One showed. Game on. I'm going back to bed. Close my eyes because I was going to work that day. Uh, right, okay. I was due to, due to go to work at about 10. So my nights back then, finish work on Wednesday, start a little later, 10 o'clock on a, on a Thursday. So that was my night. Uh, and this is, we're, we're in May now, early May. So done that, gone to bed. Open my eye like that. I must have had a line which woke me up. And then the rod has just hooped. And th- this is the snaggiest lake I've ever fished. It is mental snags. Most people lose their first five, six feet, you know, yeah. but because why one thing happens to me and I'm just ain't fucking happening again. So what I've done is, is I, my rods, I'd always have the rods on solid sticks with solid grips, but then I bang storm pole in front of the, the tip, obviously. Yeah. And then I bang a stick uh, on the real handle. So if it could pull as hard as it wants, that rod is not Go going anywhere. Yeah, yeah. And, and no line on braid. There's only so much I can do. They could kite into the snags still because I'm fishing past snags cool dangerous whatever you want but what I generally do is or I, is I dip the rod down the deep margin and yeah. just drag like that you don't give them nothing if you're going to let give them anything don't fish like that but 
I don't give them anything. Just they ain't got the option, you know. And if they do get in, I'll wade in there. You but, must have a big old hook on there, mate. Yeah, well, a four or a two is generally yeah, what I'll use. Yeah, yeah. Like, I'm, to, at the minute, it's been twos this year and big baits, 24 millers. But um, I'll go on to that in a, in a bit if, if it's worth it. But uh, yeah, anyway, it, <laughs> I, I didn't really think about what it was, but it, it was fighting and the common's not known to not fight. And I've had bites in there where I thought it could be the common because I'm getting a bit of that. No fight. Yeah, yeah. Head left, head right. And anyway, I got it in and I, I got the head poked up. Common. The only common that I've ever seen in there. I've never seen another common. I've had 15 fish before that, all mirrors. I'd had caught this spring, which I hadn't talked about, but I sort of skipped it. But um, the, the the out of bounds, a tree had fallen in in a storm, which had mm-hmm. made that spot redundant. Yeah. But didn't really matter in the end, you know. Um, yeah, and I got it in. I, I think it was like 42 pounds something. And, uh, nice. I rang Kieran. He'd come down. And uh, Kieran from the reservoir and, uh, mate, he, you could ring him at any time. He just comes, you know, and uh, he's on there at the minute. He, he's been doing well, so I'm, I'm I'm buzzing for him, you know. But yeah, that sort of he went so smooth considering it was over. I'd done a, an autumn and a winter or whatever, and then I come back, and it was just nice to consistently catch really nice cart, and then the the, the big one at the end, catch them all, you know, perfect. Really. Yeah, man. Cra- and also cray wise, mate. Because that has got a set of circumstances on there that could be an absolute nightmare, mate. Snaggy, you've got craze, you've got, well, you're on maggots, but I'm still guessing they're still going to be visiting those spots if there's bait going on there regularly, isn't there? Yeah, I mean, they're bad. the craze are bad. I did get crayed. Um, funnily enough, that night, I fished a tiger nut with a bunch of craze on top. A bunch of maggots. No, I didn't. I didn't. I was, I was wary of the craze because I hadn't pre-baited. I right. knew it was game on, but I was wary of the craze. So what I did was... I got a tiger nut, big one. I bored it out with a drill. I'd shoved loads of dead maggots, uh, maggots in there, chopped them up, and then plugged it with um, foam so it smelt like a maggot. And I tipped it with three artificial maggots. So it looked like a maggot and smelt like a maggot. Right. Tasted like a maggot, but obviously it was a tiger nut with fake maggots on the top. Yeah, I didn't use real maggots on that one. Uh, I was wary of the craze that night. And generally, tigers, you're all right. On the reservoir, they, they could do your, your, your tigers. But on there... They were right. safe. Yeah, but I'd, I'd fish frog more. I fish so many waters now with crazing that I was sort of used to it and I knew what I had to do about the craze when I had to do it, or at least sometimes. I did get crayed on there bad sometimes. Um, generally, if you weren't catching, you were getting crayed. So the craze where I'm fishing now, where the last year's fishing, uh, are far worse. You know, Really? Yeah. What, in terms of number? Number, numbers and size and everything. Do you ever use them? Like, as in... No. No. Smash them up, put no, them out. Don't like it. What? What? In terms of what? I don't know. You just... don't like smashing them up? No, no, I don't mind smashing them up. <laughs> but um, um, uh, to be, you know what? I don't kill them though. When I, I, I don't. Act, I used to on Frogmore, but I don't kill them when I get them in because I think what's the point? Yeah. There's billions of them in there. One's not going to make. I just put them back. You know, yeah. like there's no point in killing something if you don't have to. So um, nah, but I, I don't know. I just don't see crayfish meat as being more attractive as as what as maggots or as uh, a good boilie or you know I don't see it personally I put a lot I use a lot of salt and I use a lot of crumb not always mm. but I, at that time certainly a lot of maggot peanuts tiger crushed tiger you know I don't believe a particle sometimes as well fermented um, put oils in my back and you know I don't believe that a cray is anywhere near as attractive and all you're doing is putting like shells and that on your spot and I think a cray would eat it all day long. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, I suppose they'd eat their own, wouldn't they? Yeah. That's what they do, mop, mop anything over on the Mate, they're bugs of the, of, the, yeah. of, the, of the water, you know? Like, they're, they're giant bugs. Rig considerations with craze? What do you... More so now than back then, yeah. I've learned a lot since then. What do you do? Beak points? Yeah, beak points. I mean, obviously that night was a sharpened hook, but I just sort of felt like it was going to be good. One of your crazy Buddhist Zen well, moments, Well, I, I did mate. see the fish in the snags, like, but the snags are still 20 yards away from the snag I was fishing because you can't get close to them. They were in the middle of a oh, probably a hundred yard stretch of snags. So, and I and I was the other end of it. Um, but uh, rig wise, yeah, like a knotless knot. Obviously, fishing on the deck, um, nothing that they could pull to like ruin. Like a, um, I weren't fishing a multi or anything like that. Fairly stiff braid, no putty or anything crazy. I used to uh, at that point. I was shrink tubing putty. So I was getting putty on and then putting shrink tube over the top. And they don't? Yeah, they do, yeah. I yeah. don't do it anymore. 
I do other stuff now. But back then, yeah. Other stuff. Yeah, I'll get on to it when we talk about the the the, fight, the, the, lake, the lake I'm fishing at the minute. It's, there's there's all sorts that I do for the craze, you know. Like, yeah. But I can't say it all. <laughs> You can't say I hate it this because, yeah. I, I, this sounds good, mate. Yeah, well, we'll see. Just tell me off camera or when you've completed the chapter, you'll have to come back in. Yeah. No, I'm never telling anyone. <laughs> tell me the cray tips, <laughs> it, mate. That, that, it, Yeah. I mean, look. It, They're becoming a feature though, aren't they? Let, let's face it, there's a lot more. Yeah, I, yeah, I hear yeah. a lot more about it now and I get a lot more sort of feedback podcast-wise on the few that we've done. I'm trying to think. Look, um, puke. Benji, they fished a water park and the water park's rife with them. Yeah, yeah. And being able to effectively angle when they are in sort of plague numbers is a massive edge because mm. there must be loads of rods that aren't fishing. Yeah, oh, mate. It's the best thing about the craze is that you, most people aren't fishing. Yeah. Perfect. You know, like, I'm not saying that you want, you know, when you've got limited time, every nuisance is a nuisance, yeah? Oh, yeah. So a crayfish is a, is a bloody nuisance. A stocky is a nuisance. As great as they are for the A future. stocky is a nuisance. They That's are. when you know you're a proper carp angler, aren't you? <laughs> no. Stockies are a nuisance, mate. I take them all it's, the time. It, it is, it is, if I, you know, if I, if I could spend more time down, and I'm not moaning that I don't get any time because I know loads of people get less than me, and, you know, I, I like the time that I do, and if I pushed it, I could. Everyone's got seven days in a week. You can do what you want with that time, can't you? Yeah, yeah, it's how much you, you want know? it. Yeah, exactly, and I don't want it that much. I want my little. I want to see my little ones. If you don't have kids and that, great, go all the time, or if you... Do what you want in life, but yeah, I want to. I'm happy with the time that I do. Stockies, I'm, mate. How do you avoid them? Uh, massive baits, massive hooks. Proper BC agricultural <laughs> trawlerman, isn't you? I'd rather I'd rather use a 15 miller. And I think you said to me on the phone, like you ain't messing about with two 24 millers or something. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. you like you're just not. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. And obviously, it costs you fish. It might even cost you a 30, or it might cost you a, a 40 with a small mouth, or it might. Cost you a really nice carp that's twenty five pound, that, but you have got to weigh it up. And craze rud, stockies, uh, bream, you know, other anglers, otters, they're all nuisances, aren't they? Mm-hmm. You know, and I love it when a, when a, a, a mate catches a big one on your lake or whatever. But at the same time, you've got to, you do think to yourself like, what can I? You've got to have your own little edges and stuff, and and to do it, and you've got to fish in certain ways to. You know, do you want the glory of I had 50 bites in this year and all this, or do you want to catch the big carp? I know I said it's not all about the big carp. So for me, it isn't about the stockies or it just isn't. You know, I like catching I just the big one. bite, mate. Nothing but... wrong with that at all. Like, that is a more a purest way and that is better, I think. You know, I wish I liked, you know, as a kid, I love, I love catching bream, you know. I love to catch tench and then I like catching the pike. But, um, as soon as I caught the carp, it was all about carp. Then it was all about the nice carp. Then it, you know, and that's just sort of how it's become. But it's only when you catch one and you don't buzz at how you expect that you, you're more selective with what you're fishing for, you know. But um, also it just adds another dimension to the challenge to get you out there. That's what I think is the main thing. Like, as I said earlier, you know, like it keeps it interesting, keeps you going to the next water, the next water. There's people who have been on my water for 30 years and they've caught them all and they're great, great anglers. But, and that's fine. But for me, I get bored. I'm, yeah, I'm getting yeah, bored yeah, now. Yeah. I'm yeah, getting bored, yeah, yeah. you know. So I think you need something to challenge challenge you, uh, change your way of fishing all the time. I like that. Over, over all these times, and we talked about challenges, over all these different venues and the different chapters you've had, you've obviously been incredibly successful, but you've also caught a lot of carp that are, that are the special ones, if you like. They might look special, but they are special ones within that lake, and we've referenced a load of them going by. What What have you... What have you seen in terms of the characteristics? Because those special ones don't come out all the time. Those special ones don't always frequent the bank. Great anglers can go on. They can take a lot of time. You talked about people staying a long time on the venue after them. Have you seen any anything specific as to why those fish don't come out so frequently or why they're more difficult? I think you've got to look at what everyone's doing and think, how can I do the opposite, but in an effective way, you know? Um, because... you. If someone's catching all the good ones, or you, they, you can look at what they're doing, but if everyone's doing okay, you got to think, well, how can I do better than them? And it, it's not about catching more or anything, but like, for example, on the lake I'm on now, there's two fish, um, one done five years without getting caught, and then it's done 18 months, you know, and then there's another one that, to my lodge is only, knowledge, has only ever done two captures. And they're, it's one of them waters, the bloke who runs it, you don't own it, but the bloke who runs it, it's a park lake, Busy as anything, but it's dear to his heart. So he looks 
you know, he, he writes everything down and all of that. Okay. Um, and it's not even his late. He just loves it. You know, he fished it, done really well and, and has just monitored it. He just loves doing it. And he, and he, it's his work as well. So he, so he works for a company who manage a huge load of lakes in the Lee Valley. And yeah, there are fish in there that just don't get caught that, that have been out once. And he's like, oh, no, where's that? what's that one? No one knows that one. So how do you catch them? Well, last you know, last year I caught uh, I caught a couple of rare ones. Like um, I don't feel like I was doing anything special for them, but I, I'm gonna I'm gonna you know what I mean? Like you always do it your own way. So like everyone's got their own way of doing things or their own ways. Um, but yeah, I, I've got a few ideas. I've got a few ideas that you know the big baits to select the bigger ones, but you've got to accept that you're not getting as many bites. I mean, to put it this way, right? One of the anglers. He done really well. He he done a lot of time, but he done well. He, like if I'd have done his time, probably wouldn't have caught what he caught. He, he, he'd had dozens of carp over a six month period. Um, but he, none of the real big ones, mm. none of the ones that I wanted. So, and I was getting frustrated. This spring, I've been I've been getting frustrated because I had a really good year last year. We could talk about it in a minute if you want, but I had a really good year last year, and this year I sh- this. I've done sort of 11 nights over between January and May and I felt like I should have caught but I didn't and I had anything to sit different were you doing anything different between the successful year and the not really no no but it, I realised I realised a few things which are great one thing I had to sit down and say to myself Jake matey opposite and when I say opposite right three four hundred yards over there yeah he's not it's not his fault that you ain't catching it's your fault because I go, oh, he gets more time than me. Yeah, I got into that trap very, for a very short period, which I think we all do. But generally speaking, like last year, I wasn't involved in any politics in the lake, didn't talk to anyone, didn't know anyone, right. just went down there, done the fishing, caught quite a lot of carp, a few big ones, like done really well with the big ones. And um, this year I've struggled my tits off. And as soon as I said, um, as, soon as, as soon as I sat down and said to myself, sort shit out, it's no one else's fault but your own, mate. You're fishing crap. It all fell into place. So, yeah, you know, I don't know if you want to talk about where I'm currently fishing next or what, but... I don't know, I don't know if I want to blow it for you. Do I not want to? Do you want to? No, I'm happy to talk about it. I've sent you the stuff. Yeah, yeah I've spoke about it before. So, yeah, I'm, I'm again, on the bank, like, with other anglers, if, if you're willing to talk to me, I'm willing to talk to you and I'll share everything. I'm not, I'm not a secret... You know, I won't give you everything because do you want it on a plate? And I don't want all of your stuff on a plate because if we all done that, I yeah, think it would yeah. ruin the challenge a bit for you. But uh, but you know, when you're sat there with someone, you don't really know them. You're both on the lake and you're having, he's made you a tea or whatever. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. You, I think it's only right that you sit there and you have a little chat about the lake and it gets you buzzing and, you know, and you might have to do a lap with them and they might go, oh, let's have a look down it. And, oh, I didn't know they sat in that snag and you've learned something. And you might say about a bar and they've learned something. So, I like that. I like, you know, with all, everyone can teach you something. Yeah, definitely. And there's a lot that I don't know. And there's a lot that, you know, and it's, you can doom about it. Like I, let's say I did over the course of them. Yeah. Seven or eight, nine nights, or you can not be a knob, <laughs> you know? I, I've got it described poetically yeah. by you here as craze and crackheads. Yeah. That's what it's down as, mate. Pretty much, yeah. I mean, yeah, no, nail on the head. <laughs> so, yeah, I got the ticket. Uh, where was I fishing before that? Oh, that was that one. So, we've obviously, we skipped places, but that one there, um, the small water we just spoke about, I went from there and straight onto this one. I'd always wanted not, a ticket. Not normally in the middle, no? Yeah, normally it was before. Oh, it was before. Because before. Like, I, I had a gap, didn't I? Yes. I had a gap where I did St. Ives and Norvi and went back to the Otter Pit for a bit and all sorts. So, you know, I, I bounce around a lot. So this yeah. is why we could never actually cover every, everything because I've been back to the Otter Lake since and I've caught out of there. Have you? Yeah. But, you know, and I, 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 I will always go back there when I need to have a bit of me time, you know, just sit there, rods out, 300 yards, 200 yards out. <laughs> I like that, man. You know, tips down, rod goes up like that, and you never know what, really what it could be. They all flood into yeah, each that's other. That's cool, and, isn't it? Yeah, it's wicked. So, um, and I ain't caught them all. Like, there's still fish in there that I haven't had. They're growing the big, as well. The big one. I've had that one. But there's They're a, not another big one. There's a big common. I don't know how big it is, though. I ain't seen it. But I walked the dog recently, uh, last year. So between, when I finished up on the Little Lake, the yeah. Little Cray Lake, to yeah. go on to the Big Cray Lake, 
I, um, which isn't the secret of the name because there's, there's a limited amount of tickets, but no point in naming it. I've um, I've, I've gone to to um, the Otter Pond and I've jumped in where I caught it from. And all these years later, there was still a very faint trail where I think I've actually killed the roots because I've walked in and Stumped out a few them, times yeah, yeah. and I'd left a few bits there when I got caught. So I've gone back and I'd actually ended up going in for another look a few times after that in the like, last light and stuff. Couldn't help myself in case, you know. But anyway, walking the dog around there with the missus and the little one, we, we love it there. You see um, a lot of grass snakes and all that. My my little one loves it. It's just yeah, cool. it's like a little paradise. Lay next door's carnage. This one's paradise. So I've, I've waded through and I've had a look and I've seen, I could see him up the tree and I was like, Millie, I've got to strip off and jump in. So I've, I've waded through, just obviously I'm not fishing, I'm wearing normal, like what I'm wearing now. Got in and I've seen, again, like what, 15 carp or something. Yeah, the same spot. Yeah, on the, I know, I know, like, I just, it's when you've been there, you've been yeah, there, you've yeah, seen yeah. it so much, you know where they're going to be. And they're all there, I've got my phone out filming them and then there was, they, they were spooking off me but then coming back because obviously they're not really used to people. Huh. And um, it's come round, this this common and I've seen it, <laughs> wouldn't mind that one, you know. I really wouldn't mind that one. So I, I know they've grown. So someone's actually fished it since I fished it. He, he pre-baited a spot and he'd done quite well. And Mate, get through the reeds, get a worm on, chuck <laughs> it on the red. You've got all of them in yeah, a day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, look, he's, you know, he, he, he's caught a common that I've seen, that I've, sorry, that I've caught with a nick in its tail. They're all otters. Okay. Apart yeah, from yeah. that mirror, it's weird. That's the fat you one. You see the otters on there? Yeah, loads, yeah. So I've had yeah. fish. I've had, I've had otters through my lines all night and then, I, and then Rod's gone. No, yeah, the yeah. Rod's gone? Yeah. Never, never had any problems with him on the line or anything. I fished a place not too long, well, very recently, and I was pranging mm. with one in the sling. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. For yeah. like, literally, it was in the sling for like half an hour. I don't think. I, like, I think they're they're shy. They won't go near an angler. I could, and I've never, I've never really fished many waters with them about, mm. but that water had them on. Yeah, and it was, you could hear them. Yeah, and there'd be a lot of trailer bubbles. Yeah, yeah. They'd go across the front of the swim. I didn't get liners, but you, it was like they were there, mate. It was not a nice feeling. I feel, I've filmed them loads during the day on there, so they're quite tame, if you like. But they live on a 10-acre island. With, you know, Yeah, they live in the dream, aren't they? Live in the dream, yeah. So, But um, anyway, um, where were... Yeah, uh, the, the crackhead place. So <laughs> I'd, uh, I'd got this ticket. My, there was a fish in there called Goldie, right? And my mate Kieran, his last name's Goldie, He's like, oh, mate, this is fishing there called Goldie. I've got to catch it. It's lovely, blah, 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 blah. Been in there for years. It's quite a well-known fish. I seen Nick Hellier recently, and he, I was talking to him about it. We were doing a bit of filming with him, and, and he said, uh, oh, where are you fishing? I told him, he said, oh, is that one with the big scale? Scale still in there? Yes, yeah, it is actually. You know, so it's, it's, it's known. Yeah, it's, it's, known, known yeah, yeah. it's been about sort of thing. Um, it's probably the most sort of historic fish I've caught because I tend to sort of go to quieter places and maybe places where there aren't for the big ones and stuff. Um and I really wanted to catch that one. Kieran wanted to catch it. He got offered the ticket, but it was bad timing for him. He was at uni. And then I, uh, it was like a 10-year wait or something, but he'd managed it. But anyway, they'd lost that. The thing had changed hands. New owners. Yeah. Got a ticket straight away. Buzzing. 50 members only. But the lake itself, you've got 35, 40 acres. Five islands sort of dotted along. They call it the Bermuda Triangle. There's like a triangle of islands. I love it there. Um, but you've got, yeah, clear water in the spring, algae from May, mm. um, can't see into it at all. Weedy sometimes, other times craze fuck it. You've got four corners of the lake where they sort of get into, but you never know when. It's shallow. Casting at them, they bugger off. Yeah. Um, big set of pads the size of most, you know, probably like three acres of pads or something. Just savage. Um, but the, the main thing is public. It's the public's playground. You're in an area close to London, mate, it is rough. Like, it's rough. I've seen people arrested outside the lake, you know. I've been offered all sorts of drugs. My first session, I turn up and I've, I've arrived. There's, so there's, there's double swims. Right. They're like, you know, they're like, you've got like an oak tree dividing two platforms. Yeah. They yeah. need platforms on there because the swims don't go far out enough. You've got snags everywhere. So you need platforms to actually get out to the water. Otherwise, you're never going to land nothing. They'll just kite Anyway, the the public loves swimming in this lake. And my oh, first night, no. there's these, I'd say they were Russians, right? There was about, I don't know. First night I got on there, blistery knot, last year. I look along, a blonde girl, she's banging some bloke. Right? Oh, wow. Yeah. Right, over there. I've got the bailiff in the swim next door, which is a long way round. He's closer. 
And he's rang me because I've met him 10 minutes, 20 minutes. Can you see that, mate? You know, he's, he was mad. Welcome to the Lee Valley, you know, Thank like proper you, welcome to the Lee Valley. And then in my swim, I've got a party, load of girls, young, 20, 21, something like that. You know, some of them have got no top side. It's mental. And then... What in the... Where, where were you fishing, mate? I was fishing... I was fishing... I was I literally... I was as far away as, as the thing there. The, the, like, what a bunch of topless girls having a party. Yeah. I didn't look. I felt... I, That's absolute I, was, nice. I, 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 had, I had my sunglasses on. No, I, did, <laughs> I, 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 I was like, right, just game on. I bet you were watching the water intently, mate, weren't you? <laughs> I was watching their <laughs> bit of water. I was a bit um, of fizzing over it. <laughs> <laughs> so, um... <laughs> Oh, I was going to say something really bad. <laughs> yeah, I bit, think we've all been there yeah. mentally. Go on. Um, no, I was just going to say a bit of frothing. But <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, yeah. So um, th- these their, their blokes have come right. These fucking massive blokes have come along. Load of booze and that. They're partying. They're jumping in, jumping out, littering. I'm not saying nothing to them. You know, no. I'm not saying nothing. Anyway, so they're partying four or five hours. They've gone. This quaint little couple have come in. And they've come into the swim and they're just sat watching the water, reading books. Bailiff comes around. Jake, you should not let him do this, mate. He's going mental at me. He's had a go at them. And I'm like, it ain't, it's not their litter. It was these scary. But and I was going to wait for them to go. And then I was going to tidy it up. But I couldn't say it was Matt. And it was just like a welcome to the lake. Oh, my you know? God, mate. But yeah, I had a, a couple that trip stockies. And I assume I was like, right, I've got to change. You know what I mean? I've got to change everything. Um, can't be catching stockies. So... Changed everything pretty quick. Um, and yeah, next session, it was just like this every time. It was a, it was a hot summer last year. And yeah, yeah, we had was. we had a um, next session, I pulled a four-nighter. She was going to Cornwall this time last year. And I'd done two nights in between, actually. And I, no, I'd done one night in between and I blanked. And the next session, I was like, crayfish, eating everything. Mm. 100 stockies or whatever, 50 originals, let's say. Maybe not 100 stockies, 70 stockies, 120 fish, 130, something like that. I'm going to give them some bait. Crazily eat it if they don't eat it. So I put out, I've got four nights. I'll probably put out, oh, I don't even know. I just went for it. I had a big bucket of particle like that, big bucket of tigers. I had, I think I had 20 kilo boilies for four nights. And I had a lot of salt, probably 10 kilo salt. And yeah, I smashed it. I got there early in the morning and I'd found a load on the right hand side of this island this island's probably five acres itself found a load on the end of this island once they'd gone I'd let it I'd put two singles out once they'd gone let it out, up a bit and I found it was very shallow around there mm. three four two three foot oh yeah there was fours a bit of fours holes in that oh, I don't know ain't the one for me so the other side of the island I'd let it about there and it was all six seven eight foot yeah big plateau Five foot, four or five foot, prime. Loads of bait on that. One on it, one off it, one off it. Spread yeah. the bait. Yeah. Nightmare for the craze. You don't want to ball a craze. Anyway, little Ronnies. Ronnies were the one on there last year. They really were for, for the craze because they couldn't, they just, it was hard for them to ruin your rig. You've got sh- like straight um, stiff boom and a, and a Ronnie. But everyone does it. So I was, anyway, put the Ronnies out and, First night I blanked, I'd snuck one in the room next in the swim next door. Like it weren't against the rules, you're allowed to do it. But one in the swim next door, two in this swim. First night blanked, second night, put more bait out. I'd uh, I think I'd had one on that rod. Sorry, lost one on that rod, lost one on the other rod. Hook in the other swim. So on this swim and on that swim. Right. Like they're, okay. they're not far. It's like a double swim. Yep. Uh it's like thirty steps or something to the rod. And it weren't dangerous fishing. Like if it kited, it couldn't have gone anywhere. And just anyway. Lost two. Bugger. I was using silly hooks. I knew, I knew it. As soon as I reeled in, I thought, right, wide gapes now. Um, I was using them bloody claw hooks because I thought, curved with a beaked point, the craze are going to struggle with it. But I'll tell you what else struggles with it. Carp. They can't hook themselves on them. I've just had two hook pulls. I ain't had a hook pull for eight for years. You know, like for a ah. long claws. No, not your claws. The corder ones. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah. Sorry to mug you off corder, but it's for that situation, it weren't the one. So you've got, it's a curved shank. It's nothing like your claw. Yeah, your yeah, claw's yeah. a wide gate. With, it's with, a wide gate, which is the bend. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, and a lot of people love them. But these, it was a curved shank, quite an aggressive curve, with a beaked point. Right, okay. I, in my head, I was like, it looks great for a cray hook because... It's 
protecting that point. It's protecting the point, but yeah, the point yeah. is so protected. It might be great on a bottom bait, but it weren't the one for a Ronnie. The gate was uh, just not there. I used big ones. Yeah. Yeah, uh, anyway. What would you switch to then? A wide gate? It's a wide gate, yeah. Yeah. I, I hadn't changed hooks in years, and all of a sudden I'm using a claw. But it, it made sense. Like, and I do change things when I feel necessary. Yeah. Um, but obviously I got it wrong. But next night, obviously changed it. Two bites, double take. The first one, was that the next? Yeah, so this is the third night now. Uh, one on there, stocky. Yeah. On that rod. And then the middle rod's gone. Um, so yeah, I'm reeling it in. Obviously that rod halfway through is gone. I feel it feels decent. It's a stocky, but it's probably 18 pound. Linear, right. lovely looking thing. Got it in, ran to the other rod. The net's in the swim next door. I didn't think about having two, bringing two nets with nets with me because <laughs> I never thought I was going to do that. Now I bring two, so I've got the rod. Out. Anyway, luckily, because this was fishing slightly more dangerously, mm. not dangerous, but if it kited and took a bit of line, eventually it would hit a snag. So I don't fish it that way anymore. But anyway, got to pick the rod up like that. You know, head up, head down, left, right, mm. left, right. Oh fucking, this feels big. Like it was massive. And yeah, I knew all the way in. Got it to, it's, and it's gone over the left-hand line. Da, 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 da. I've had to wade into the next swim, grab the rod, and the, because you're allowed to, basically, if it's for the fish safety, safety you, you yeah, get yeah. in. Um, um, uh, and gone across. When I say wade, it, the water was that deep, right? Against the, the, so it's not wading. It's almost like welly in, welly booting in. So I'm like in ankle deep water like that, grab the net, go back round. Um, and I've, yeah, it, it's, freed it, yeah, yeah, freed it, and yeah, I've, I've had a bloody, I've, I've had a, a big common. I don't know what one it is. It's got these massive bulging eyes, huge gut on it. It was, you know, the bollocks, you know. Um, how big? How big is a big common? I weighed it the next day, and bear in mind, six weeks before I, I'd had the, the common from before, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I was like, this is, this is, as big as that. Um, but anyway. I flicked through the photos. Looked at I put it in the sack for an hour, mm. right? Because this was at about four, and I done the photos at five. Yeah, I like to give them a rest anyway, as long as the sun ain't on them. Because I feel like the worst thing you can do, carp in the net straight out. Yeah, give them at least fifteen minutes, at least because they're going through all of that, and then they're going to go through that. You know what I mean? So anyway, gave it an hour. Um, done the photos. I've got a little button and all of that. Oh no, Luke come down. So the others I've done the button. Luke, who fishes the lake, my mate had come down. He's done, the, he got it on the, anyway, weighed it. Uh, it, was, it was 40 pound 10 or something like that. It was along them lines, yeah. right? And yeah, mate, it was, you know, buzzing. Another yeah. one, six weeks later, I've had, I've had this, this fish and I've realised which one it was and it's one of the real old ones. It's been 34s for years uh, and I didn't want to tell no one the weight. No. I think I'm changing. Because think you just, yeah, yeah. Anyway, it come out in the autumn at 41. Right. And then it come out 43 this spring and then died. So, Oh, no. Nice. Gutter. But, yeah. yeah what yeah. do you reckon? Spawn bound or just old? Um, it was around spawning time. Yeah. So I don't think it was spawn bound when I caught it because it's no. always had the gut. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. It's grown. Okay. You know, it, 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 the place suffered a fish kill that at some point. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. and all the big ones got bigger. So I think, And they're all getting massive. Um, and this is my, it's not a super water, but it's my first sort of fit, like where there's a few forties in there, you know, which is great. I, I, I've absolutely loved it. So it's just industrial. You're fishing thick line, braid, big leads. So the craze can't fuck them. Wrapped baits. I wrapped mine six times. Hard hook baits, big baits, you know, and I was fishing. Wrap them six times. Yeah, 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 yeah. As long as some of the holes are exposed, I don't mind because it smells. Everyone uses plastic baits. I don't like them. I ain't doing it. I was going to say, why not plastics? Why because not I, plastics? I, cause I, cause I don't have to now. <laughs> Put my stuff out and they don't they don't bother you so much. It's a bait that makes the fat craze go funny. Put it in the edge and you, you know. Yeah, you see it. Put it in the edge and you yeah. see it. They go weird. Yeah. They go weird. Yeah. You know? So, anyway. I've had another two the next day. Oh, sorry, I've had another one the next night, final night. And, and bear in mind, right, we've got in the night, it's in the days, long days of doing nothing. Mm. Swimmers going through your line so you're reeling in. You've got uh, people on, it's mental, lit out everywhere. There was four fires, drunk people throwing bottles on the floor behind my swim, smashing to bits. Someone, a big group have come along, put all their rubbish in my rubbish bag and pissed themselves laughing. It is, you're getting burnt to a crisp, 40 degrees it was, and there was four fires. So 
there was ambulance uh, fire engines everywhere. There's four fires on the lake. Oh, that does not sound it, one, mate. But you've got in the when in the weather's like that, it's your lake. Yeah, because yeah, no one's yeah. there. No one, no one wants to fish that. It's a nightmare, isn't it? So as soon as they're gone at night, Muntjac everywhere, Lee Valley stuffed full of them, um, and it's it's any it could be anywhere in the world. You know, you've got the houses all along there, which ruins it a bit, and a train line. Just look over there, it's all right. You know, but you still got the moon, the stars, and the water, <laughs> and the fish are showing, and you know. But the, the main thing with that place was second guessing them. Like I said earlier, there's no weed getting now. A, yeah, getting ahead. Don't matter where they where they're showing. Where are they going to be at night? No weed. They're going to feed at night. So where are they going to be? And work that one out. You know, where's the wind going? Where's this the pressure? Everything, the depths. Work that. Out. And that's how I've fished it really. Um, but yeah, the two. I had a week off. And because I caught the big and wait, uh, a big and sorry, yeah, not the big and I thought, right, I'll go back a week later. Same, I, I'd gone down twice though and baited up with I think it was, it was a 20 litre bucket of particle before work. So I got there, at, I left the house at three in the morning, got there whatever time, 45 minutes. Then I've drove an hour and 10 to work, so working at the barbers at the time. But I've obviously posted on Instagram now to try and build up this video thing. And yeah, so um, I'm baiting it baiting it, baiting it, smashing this bait in this spot and no one's really fishing it and it's hot. Perfect. Gone down two weeks later, knew it was game on, see this moon. It wasn't a full moon, but it just perfect, like a half moon and it was red in, in the distance. My mate Luke was to my left. My mate Charlie was to my right, who I've met on there. Just a wicked bloke, like probably just a good crack. And he was catching an opportunist, doing quite well doing that, pinging singles. Right. And, um, yeah, I, I, mate, it was just wicked. Like, before I got the rods out, a couple of beers with him, a couple of beers with him. I got all the bait out, but I put my rods out on dark yeah, because of the craze. Yeah. And the week before, I actually caught a cray on the retrieve after, uh, and then cast that same rig back out, caught that big one. But I lost one on the final morning. I had, I had one and lost one. So I had six bites. Jeez. And the one I lost felt massive, felt like a male, brutey. It, the fight was unreal. I could, I just don't know what. I could How'd have you done lose it, hook pull? No, it done me in a snag. Did it? And it cut me off. First cut off I've had in in years. You know, it, I was I was gutted. It really do, it does me when it happens. Mm. I just I knew I, I, it was a big one. It was it was a male. It just it, a big a big female. I feel like I don't really fight. Yeah, just wallow heavy, they? and they yeah, wallow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Big male feels the same way, if not heavier. Right. But you can't stop it. No. It was like mid-20 on steroids yeah. with a load of weight to it. So anyway, anyway, two weeks later, got back down, rigs out after the beers. Love it. Like, I'm loving all the other aspects of fishing. And I know what I'm doing, so I don't have to give it much thought. Next morning, four in the morning, a real rare one, the koi. I, I, there's no build up there, but I had the koi, right? <laughs> the koi, yeah. the koi. I had the koi, right? It sounds horrible, koi. It's a, it's got a bit of ghosty in it. I'd say it's sort of half ghosty. Um, it's it's a long, it's, it's the longest. Nothing carp. wrong with an ornamental. Mate. <laughs> there is. No, <laughs> each to their own. But um, is that on your Instagram page? Yeah, yes. Yeah, it's, it's just a well, really so long. If it's made the Insta page, mate, it was, it was forty pounder. Like, like it was, you know, it was. It was I think that was forty pound ten as well. Right, principal, your principal's diminished with weight. If it's yeah, forty mate. pounds, it yeah, don't no, no. Matter. Have a look at the photo. You wouldn't even know. Like even uh, Elliot, when I was doing this hypocrisy thing, he said, "He rang me. He said, where's that fish from? You know, because it, it doesn't look like a, a koi. It's from Matey Boy's Garden. Pond yeah. Now. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no. To add that one. Uh, my mate was like, "You're not going to believe this. Um, forty pounder, forty pound ten, whatever. <laughs> Fucking hell. You know, like I couldn't believe it. I've gone out. Uh, so." I'd packed up. I said, Luke, get in here. They're all in here now. They were mm. just... Doof, 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 doof. I thought, someone's going to come in here. It's Friday. I'm going home. At, I've got to be home for nine. And we've done the photos first light. So he's got gone in the swim. He didn't want to. He was like, oh, I don't want to fish yeah, on. Of course you, I said, yeah, mate, just fish bait, on there. I'm not going to tell you where I'm fishing. I said, just fish. But he was blanking. And he's had a few before because he was the one who got me on the Ronnies because I'd never used one before that. But for the craze, they're great. Anyway, he'd, he'd done that. I, I can't remember how he got on now, but I, as I as I reeled in, I see the real big one show. I was like, fuck, that's the big one. But I've got to go. Got to go. I can't remember. Oh, my missus was going to a wedding. She was heavily pregnant. She, she had a wedding three days. And I went home and I remember I was buzzing, caught this fish, got the brollies out in the garden, two brollies, bed chair, barbecue with a little one. And we just cooked up a feast, 
toasted marshmallows after, I had music yeah, on. Nice. Uh, oh, mate, it was it was one of the best days of my life. Wake up in the morning, forty pounder. Everything in life was sort of flowing in the right direction at that point. Yeah. Uh, my little one, you know, spend the night with her. She's loving it outside in the sleeping bag. Half three in the morning, we both wake up. It's a bit cold. You go inside, you know, like yeah, we had yeah, a barbecue. Yeah. And, and to be fair to her, she slept about six hours out. Right, it's just one of the best days, you know? Yeah. So, yeah, done that. And then blagged two, two more nights because I was like, right, I'm going to do one more night, lock it off for the year. But blagged two more nights. I'd, on my next night, I'd had a feeling about an, a zone for the autumn, deeper water. Didn't even look. I was on my way to the lake. I got to the lake, barrowing round. My mate rang me. All right, Jake, do you want to make a few grand? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he goes, well, I've got the, I can't remember which one, but they were playing Luton, a, a football team down in the Luton Who. I live five minutes away. Right. Cut all their hair, get a couple of grand. Yeah, job done. Oh, what, what, when is it? He said, oh, tonight. I went, no, mate, I'm fishing. I've got two nights left of the year. You know, it weren't a hard decision, but in hindsight, I'm not good have done with that. Um, but anyway, I didn't, I've never told my missus that one. That's I hope she don't listen to this, mate. So yeah, when I was cutting air, like I was, I'd done quite a lot of the footballers and, and rugby players and stuff like that. And like uh, Watford and uh, Luton and the Saracens and whatnot. And yeah, you, when you cut an air, you, you do, you know, you just, you come across people. Uh, everyone needs their air cut, but bend it off. I had a job interview with, um, job interview with uh, Luton Airport the next day for the recruitment which I didn't oh, take yeah. so I was like right I've got to go to bed early and anyway bang the rod out and had a, a, an old a real old one known as Black Scar going perfectly it was it's done 40 pound plenty of times but I'd had it at 34 fine smashing maggots out loads of bait but I've put the maggots in now in deeper water right I said to Millie I've got to do one more night you know gone back a week later and I've done the same thing again I've seen Big and showing like you know, I'm, I'm sort of shortening it down a bit, but um, yeah, I've seen the sort of big and showing and I, mate, that night within, I think I fished 12 hours, eight o'clock to eight in the morning. I had to go, I can't remember where I had to go, but I had to go early. And it was my last night of the year. Oh no, that was the night that oh, the football thing. But anyway, last night of the year, uh, Will, my mate, he's, he's um, fished down Frogmore with us. He come down, curry, beers, um, I knew it was game on. And then between, I think it was probably four and six, I'd had four bites. Four bites. One of the real old ones. It weren't a big one. It's 28, 29. And then I'd had a 35 pounder, but one of the real nice ones. And, and I was just like, right, yeah, cool. Go home and done for the year now. Yeah. And that was it. And, and you know, I, I knew that, my my little one was due in two months. So this was late yeah, September. Yeah. She was due late November. And I thought, I don't want to be that bloke who's fishing mm. when his little missus has gone into labour yeah, early. Cool. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I locked it off. and But I still hadn't caught. It was two. But it, 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 there's now three, but at the time there was two that I really wanted. Goldie, which I mentioned earlier, mm. being the main one. I'll gloss over the, 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 this bit because I've probably banged on about it for long enough. But I've done 10 nights this this. Um, win, winter into spring. Yeah. T like I said earlier, Sad fish grind. like crap. Yeah, yeah. You know, I was on them the whole time, consistently on them. I found the big and goldie in the edge. I, I was buzzing, you know, like um, put the rigs, you know, rigs where I, I thought I should, big baits, all of that stuff. Hinges by now. Just want a hinge. I don't, in that spring mode, I feel like them carp are ravenous. Yes. And I didn't true. want a little one. I didn't want anything to ruin it. I wanted a big long rig with a big irk and a big 20 mil bait on with 24 millers pinged out, right? And by now I'm thinking, is this the right thing to do? Because I haven't caught anything on this 20 mil thing yet, 24 mil. Um, but I stuck with it. I saw the big common as well. That I want. That, that's made me want it. it. It was bigger than than that one. And the next morning, the wind's hacked down. This is in April, hacked down the other end. And they're going, doo -doo 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 -doo. and some people are coming into our swim. I'm like, yeah, mate, they're all down there. I won't move him because I wanted this one. And the hope that this one might return, even though the conditions were shit for it, the day yeah. before it was sunny. Yeah. And I'm found it in the edge. You're being selective. I'm basically. just like, I'm staying here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? And at the time, the reason I was fishing crap was because I was doing this social media work, right? For for Jimmy Armstrong. So, which was great. Got me, my, you know, got me my foot in the door and that. But I was bringing all the stuff to the lake and filming it. So on this session, I was like, right, next time. Because you're, to get to the lake, you've got to walk over a train bridge 
with your gear, like uh, a, a crossing, sometimes wait for 20 minutes. You know, these trains going in and out of London all day, through there, and then it's a long walk to the, it's a walk to the lake with your gear, you're parked in the houses, or there's another car parked the other end, which is just as long. And you've got to get through the train crossing through the road there. It is a nightmare. And, you know, like I say, it's always bloody police and it's just, it's rubbish. So I'm like, right, next session, s- scrap it all, just do overnighters. After work, get home before work. Yeah. That's what you got to do. Yeah. And fish as light as possible. Got home, stripped all my gear down to nothing because I'm bringing all this rubbish with me and all the stuff I've accumulated over the autumn. Stripped it all down, one tub of pop-ups. You know, it weighs nothing. I'm pushing it like like I'm walking. It's great. No spod rod, no spawn rod, whatever you want to call it. No marker. And... I had a hunch two areas where I thought she would. So the session before, sorry, is when this happened. And I was fishing this area and I wasn't fishing it how I should have fished it because I was worried that I was, I was too worried about what I was, about the other anglers fishing too much over there or over there, never in their water or anything. And I went, right, scrap all of that. Do your thing. If you're fishing next door to someone, they'd do it to you because it's happened too many times. Just do mm, it. Yeah. Just fish it. All right. Yeah. If someone says he's baiting there, don't listen to him. Now I never fished anyone's baiting spots. But everyone tries it, didn't they? I don't. Everyone goes, oh, you've been baiting that corner. I don't give a toss where you've been baiting. Don't tell me. I want. I get a night a week. I'm fishing where I want. Yeah, yeah. And this is the mindset change from that whole 10, 11 nights of, of that. Anyway, stripped some gear, gear down, got to the lake. I haven't even lapped it because I don't have to now. I've got the barra. I should walk around it as many times as I want. Like, really light. And um, Jag sought me out in pro light sticks. I used to use a stainless as well. They're really they bang on. You know, I was buzzing. First time using it. I'd just been to Jag and I was just, just got to the lake. And I knew it was at, it was game on. I got a video on my phone of me just messing around. I sent it to Kieran just going, ah, it's going to happen. You know, like driving down this lake. It took me two and a half hours to get there because of traffic on the M25. Jeez. But, and I'd drawn a picture of Goldie on my hand. I, I, I'd draw carp everywhere. And I, I remember getting in the car and going, Goldie's in my hands, you know. It was a bit, it was a mad one. It was one of them that, I've done a few things like that over the years, but this, yeah, just knew it was going to happen. Anyway, got there, swim I wanted to get in, someone was in there. It was Jamie, the bloke who runs the place. He right. is sound as a pound. First time I'd actually probably met him, but he's sound. I said, mate, sorry, I said, but I'm going next door. It's 200 yards away, but, you know, I, oh, I, mate, yeah. I generally wouldn't do it. Yeah, yeah. I said, I'm going next door. I said, I have to. He's like, mate, sound, just do it. They were there. They were in them big, the big set of pads, you know, and there's three swims that fish the pads. That's how big they are. One in the pads, one 100 yards that way, that end, and one 100 yards this yeah, way, this yeah, end. Yeah. But you got cast over a tree, loop your line around, get to these pads, it's about 15 wraps or something. Anyway, they're all there. It's pissing down with rain. I think there might have even been lightning. I've got a rig to these pads. I've fished as small a lead as I can get away with because I know it's game on. Two ounce, I think, with obviously sinking braid nightmare. I've fit, I've got a, a tall hinge, big bait yeah. on it, and I've just flinged. Before I got the rig out, I flinged, I don't know, thirty baits around it, which is sort of what I've been doing at that point. And um, anyway, my mate Nafe's come down. He I've known him since Frogmore days, and I always get a bit of luck when he's there. And he stood there. I've had the rod out for two hours. He saw me do saw me cast the rod out, and we stood by the rod. It's eleven o'clock at night, and he's gone. I heard bang like that. And he's gone, your, your bobbin's just hit your rod. And what? And then blah, 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 like that. And the rod has hoofed around, right? Hairiest battle of my life. But the whole yeah. time I'm thinking, I've been here before. I know this feeling. Over there, I've, you know, yeah. where I lost that fish. And I'm, I'm playing it, playing it, playing it, reeling it in. And I just knew it. It was one of them where we both knew it. Neither of us said a word. He didn't say a word. I didn't say a word. It was just like that, you know, the whole time. It got into this snag to my left three or four times, but it, the way that it could do it, I'm generally good with that. But the way that it could go from being five yards over there to 15 yards over here, like that, it was unreal. I've never seen anything like it. It was, it was like a bullet. Yeah. Anyway, done that. Got it in the net eventually. Um, hairiest battle ever. And uh, yeah, fucking, oh my God, that is a big one. And I've looked at it and it's Goldie. You know, it's the one that obviously that Nick mentioned the other week. It's the one that Kieran wanted to catch. It, it's the one, you know. So, um, yeah, it was just the buzz. Long, you know, really long, golden looking thing. Um, like a brown, real brown sort of thing. It's the one to have. You know, it looks like Choco sort of looking from Stone Acres, yeah. that kind of look. 
Uh, scale said 43, but it, we knocked off, even though I'd zeroed him, I think it must have knocked the scales or something. Right. Um, 41, 14, I think it Irrelevant, was. it's that fish. What a Don't moment. matter, yeah, well, yeah. Mate, with your mate there, uh, you yeah, like, drawing right. it, it the, on your hand. It, it was the bollocks. <laughs> it was wicked. It was one of them, I put because I put the sharp and look out. I forgot to say that. So I put a sharp and look out again because I knew it was game on. So it was one of them scenarios where you just know. You know. You've had far too many of these, mate. Well, most sessions it don't happen. It's just here and there, you know. I think there's five, maybe six of them. But where you just know and you do that, you do the. It's it's like I remember getting wind knotted and then I'd wrap the the sticks up and the braid had snapped. I was like, what? Like, but when I'm not saying on a normal day I wouldn't bother because I probably would, but. It didn't deter me. I was just like, yeah, whatever, you know, and, and just go again. Whereas other days I might have been, oh, oh God, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was. And, and you're still on there now, are you? Yeah, there's there's two more. So that was always the one. But yeah. I've got emotionally invested into another couple, <laughs> one of which doesn't come out. It just does not come out. So I've got, I've got a couple of tricks. Mate, there's some angle in there that you've covered. I mean, if you're watching this on our YouTube channel, the pictures I'll overlay are, they're immense, mate. I remember you sending them through and being like, four, 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 <laughs> mega one, mega one, mega one. Um, yeah, mate, that's incredible, mate. For you, the future, what what, what, what are you going to do? Obviously, videography-wise, mate, it's going well. You've got your art stuff as well. Life seems to be of taking a big positive swing, and rightly so, mate, because you deserve it. Family's good. What What is it? Just carry on? Go with the flow? Yeah, go, just go with the flow, really. I, once I've done on this lake, I want to go somewhere quiet and, and sort of somewhere like the Otter Lake, you know. Um, but, yeah, life-wise, you know, I've, I've always been creative. I've always wanted to do everything at the best of my ability, and, and uh, I want to make some films that are really – you know, the best out there. That's what I really love to do. Um, I think I've got the potential for it. I don't have the skills yet, but I'm learning. Um, yeah, but the best art that I could physically do um, and just enjoy every part of the fishing that I can. Um, that's about it, really, you know. The main, the main thing is just enjoying everything that I'm doing. I don't really know what I'm going to end up doing now. I might give up fishing next week. I might go full-time. You don't know. So I love it, mate. I love the, um, yeah, the sort of nature of it, mate, and how things are really organic with you. That's wicked, mate. And also the fact that you are, yeah, just like a mega-talented lad. Um, thank you for coming in, mate. Before you go, I've got some quick-fire questions, mate. You're not prepped for these. No. The first one is in reference to a phone call we had about influential TV series that we all watch, mate, as kids. Uh, if you could pick or star in one of these series, mate, which one would you have been in? Rex Hunt, Go Fishing, or Matt Hayes and Mick Brown, The Great Rod Race? Rex Hunt. <laughs> Rex Hunt's the one, isn't it? Yeah. He's the man, isn't he? Yibbity, yibbity. He, he fa- got me into fishing. He he was the one who really triggered it. So he, you know, He's still about, Rex. Yeah. He must be pretty old if he's still about. I don't think he is. Is he I don't not? think he is. Him and Steve Irwin are the two legends, you know, and if it wasn't for them two, I used to sit there with my granddad. I haven't given my granddad any credit. I know that we're coming to the end, but if it weren't for my granddad, he used to sit me down. He used to take me to the woods. We used to uh, push dead trees down. He was a really strong bloke, lovely bloke. Um, he used to uh, watch fishing with me, even though he probably didn't like it. Rex Hunt, Crocodile Hunter, everything on Nat oh, Geo Wild. Yeah, I used to sit with him. For, I used to put all the camo up on my... Uh, dressing camo and DPM and go play hide and seek in the woods and that it was wicked like so and he was the one I didn't have Sky at home or, or the NTL or whatever it was back then but he had it and I used to sit there watch Rex Hunt with him I'd, he'd make me a stick with a bit of string in the garden when I was three or four or five years old and in the flower bed pretend to fish and then he'd take me to all these places he'd drive me everywhere all the fishing I did before I had a licence he'd do it so well, Rex, uh, Hunt, Rex Hunt is a ledge so, so is my granddad. yeah so what a boy um Fish only for wrong uns or never go fishing again? Fish for wrong uns, 100%. Go on, it, boy. <laughs> uh, three celebrities you'd take fishing. They can be past, present. Oh, mate. I'd, uh, you do this one, so I should have thought about it. Uh, oh, this you is, know this, mate. I, I don't know. I don't know. There's got to be some art influence or some stuff in yours. Some spirit. Russell Brand. No, mate. I don't really like him. Your hair, mate. <laughs> my hair off. Um, right, let me have a quick think about this. Uh, I'd probably. Terence McKenna, but no one will know who he is. Who's Terence McKenna? He's uh, he was an, an advocate for for the research of magic mushrooms in 
the seventies. <laughs> he sounds like some boy. Yeah, legend. Uh, I'll take him. I will take uh, Bob Marley. I reckon because I love Bob Marley. This is basically <laughs> a massive drug fest. Uh, yeah, I know. I said it. Mushrooms. I don't do none of them. <laughs> no, but their way of lives, I, I admire. Yeah, you know? they're very sort of creative, free thinkers, aren't um, they? By the sounds of. Yeah, uh, 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 Terry Ann. I know he's a celebrity in the fishing world. Don't care what tell, he says. I'll take on the tell. boy. Um, drum and bass or country and western? Drum and bass. One person to catch a carp to save your life. Oh, Bradley Whiffin. <laughs> My mate, Brad. No one knows Bradders. him. Yeah, Bradley Whiffin. Brothers. Yeah, he's, he's wicked. Uh, never cut hair again or never draw again? Uh, easy. Never cut hair again. Would you never cut hair again? No, I never. Is that not freedom and art? I threw, it's bollocks. I threw the, clip, the scissors away. <laughs> Did I, you? I said I vowed never again anyway, so that was, that was the easiest question. Uh, what's your idea of cut fish in hell? Um, probably just doing it just for the carp, not doing it for everything else. That's it. Yeah. Um, history carp you wish you caught? Toadless lever. I grew up there. You know, it was, it was the one. It was once that Heather died, it was the one, but for me, it was always the one anyway. So that one, yeah. Final question night out on the bank or a night in with the missus, mate? Night out on the bank. <laughs> yeah, go on, the boy. <laughs> Jay, you've been an absolute star, mate. Thank you so much. A very interesting podcast. A very interesting individual. Thank you guys for watching and listening. I'll be back soon with another podcast. Until then, Jake the Heron. Thank you very much, mate. Cheers, mate.